Hello, and uh, welcome to the penultimate episode of Power Play's fifth season. Um, you say that, I usually die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, those are cold hard facts. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm Rick Bud, your Game Master, and um, these uh, four uh, um, incredible people you see before you are Sam Dulove, our Cadrax Eversinger, Omar Najam, our uh, Vion Vigor, Caitlin Bruder, our Benny Beckett, and uh, um, B. Zelda, our Ulez Galley. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome back, Omar. Thank uh, you. I'm happy to be back. It, we're happy to have you back, man. We missed you as we were running around in the setting that you made up. I missed you all so much, and I love that episode so much, and I listened to it in my car, and I cried uh, for three hours. <laughs> I'm not make... safe without you. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> you can't That's leave weird. me unsupervised. I, but what does Vion do to help? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. What I mean, it's not a hard. perfect prevention. <laughs> 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 but it is certain without him. <laughs> Having another dead person there keeps the balance, but if we don't have a Whoa, dead person, that somebody needs to die. That's so poetic. Wow, Caitlin, that was I, I buy that because I swear it's just a coincidence. Like, you know, it's like I'm not like I'm being like, all right, Omar's mm -hmm. gone. You got to kill Sam. You know, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> although oh, maybe you I'll have something him. on him and then when then um, you're gone, he's like, no. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> so. I want to throw out special thanks to Jake and Lauren and our incredible, amazing mods um, and everybody at Q Times. We could not do what we do if you all didn't do uh, all the amazing stuff that you do. So uh, thank you to y'all and uh, everybody check out all the other cool shows going on on Q Times right now. Um, and uh, your subs and your bits help support Q Times and your donations to the tip jar uh, help support this show and uh, these people that is our feed the cast fund. Uh, and, uh, as always, to that end, we have some rewards. Here's how they work. If we get to fifty dollars, uh, the team gets a point of community determination. I think they have one point of community determination right now, and Ulez has one point of determination, and that's all that's going on. So they desperately need determination. If we get to one hundred and fifty dollars, the mysterious benefactor. Uh, in game, our team has a mysterious benefactor who can send them useful gifts wherever they might be uh, in space or time. Uh, outside the game, we know that that mysterious benefactor is you, the chat, and to, uh, so far this season, you have given the team a uh, healing elixir, a holographic disguise generator, a gym pass uh, that for good for plus one to any physical attribute, a nanotech spray on armor, a kind of men in black neuralizer called a memory pruner, um, a portal generator, a sensory accelerator that's kind of like operates like Spider Man, Spider Sense kind of thing, um, and a, a fireproof superhero style bodysuit for Benny. Um, and uh, tonight, if we get to $150, um, the team, your chat can provide the team with an online class, which is good for plus one to any mental, mental attribute, not to exceed seven. So this is a chance to help the characters uh, just actually just buff up directly and get a little smarter at uh, some aspect of uh, their, their mental attributes. Um, so... Oh, wow. I think we've already opened up the community determination. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, so y'all will start with two points of community determination. Uh, and if we get $250, of course, our after credits lore drop, a revealing glimpse of some important but previously unseen part of our story or universe, a particularly cool one tonight. Um, and uh, you can always see these tiers in chat with the command unlocks. And if you can't support us by donating, you can uh, help us out by liking and commenting on uh, YouTube videos or sharing our tweets and stuff and just helping uh, support the show. Um, uh, and, and, you know, the fan art y'all have been doing has just been knocking our socks off. I mean, we were literally just talking about fan, the fan art right, 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 right before the show started. Um, and, and uh, I mean... Just, just everything y'all do, we we are super grateful for. Um, you can get Power Play merchandise. There are T-shirts and stickers with uh, Caitlin's wonderful character art and our, our logo done by our good buddy uh, Hector Lowe. Um, and you can find uh, both the original and updated versions. See, Omar's got one of the originals right there. Um, and they are available in the Q Times Stream Elements Store, the store that won't screw you with NFTs. So, uh, yeah, Q Times Stream Elements Store. Jake will put that link into the chat for you. And uh, the game we play here is called Icons. It is published by Ad Infinitum Adventures, and it was created.
created by a cool guy named Steve Kenson. You can find him on Twitter at S Kenson. Uh, the book edition is published by Green Ronin. They haven't had them in forever, um, but uh, you can get it as a PDF. And I think sometimes uh, Ad Infinitum does print to PDF versions uh, that you can get. Um, it's a great system. Try it out. You can follow the show at Powerplay RPG on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Powerplay is now available as a podcast, so you can check that out. Uh, it is available wherever fine pods are casted. Um, and uh, go check out the Discord where Omar has been doing freaking incredible things. Uh, there is um, the uh, Port Ruby Poetry Review uh, where we've had poems by Omar and Sam and Liz. Uh, it just, just fantastic stuff. Um, and uh, uh, Omar's supervillain origin stories, I think uh, um, they're they're all out now, but they're all cataloged in Discord. Just go back and read them if you haven't read them. Um, those are our, our supervillain origin stories by our own personal Ms. Marvel writer here. Um, and uh, we're going to make you wear a T-shirt that says that from now on. Um, and uh, 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 they, they are so good. I cannot, I just, I cannot overstate how good the origin stories are. Uh, and... That's the announcements. Time for power play. So, previously on Power Play, the necklace that Benny got from Althea the Enlightenist sent Benny back in time to her family farm on November 15th, 2020. With help from Miranda Vorton, the team was able to follow her. Reunited in Bellwood, they found themselves saving Benny's childhood friend Priya Singh from the Crow Man. The Crystal Neck sent them uh, to the old western town of Grave Glen in the year 1871, where they helped Sheriff Virgil Wheeler save a man named Maynard Ben Dixon, an ancestor of Vion's good friend, Destiny Ben Dixon. Next, they found themselves in a covert NSA research facility in Washington, D.C., uh, where they helped their old friend Molly Darnell prove uh, she didn't steal a huge shipment of N technology from a secure warehouse, and in the process, gave Molly's boss uh, the idea to build a super team team of his own. The next stop was Port Ruby's Bray Square, only instead of their own time, they were in the 1930s, where they helped a Star Choir refugee named Chris Sendra uh, wriggle out from under the thumb of the gangster Twist Twister Whitlow. They then jumped to Colorado in 2005, where they helped a young telekinetic boy and his teenage brother avoid being captured by Agents of End. Uh, the kids later uh, turned out to be Lila Pendry's nephews. Along the way, Benny came into close proximity to her younger self, warping reality, such that Benny was able to give herself her own powers. The team then jumped again, landing in Crescent Bay in 1941, where Benny saved a little boy from drowning and reunited him with his sister. That little boy turned out to be Ozzie Deegan, and the little girl turned out to be his sister, Althea Deegan, of the Enlightenists. Along the way, the team helped a British agent foil a Nazi saboteur's plan to shoot a missile at Port Ruby. After that, the team jumped once again, this time landing in the geographical location of Port Ruby, but at a time when the city doesn't seem to exist at all. And that is where we pick up. Jake, can you put up the arrival map, please? So you found yourself standing on a rocky shore on a cool, clear day. Vion was laying at your feet, unconscious. It took a moment to sink in because it all looks so different now, but you, you eventually realized that you are in what you know as Baronsdale. And you're at the shoreline of the area uh, that in your time is Fort Tremble, uh, where the water taxi stand is. Vivian, you start to come to. You are a bit disoriented, and the last thing you remember was drawing the time control ruin back in the mountains of Colorado. Oh, oh, all right. That one knocked us out a bit. Oh, oh hi. We greet you. 
How do you feel currently? I feel a little woozy. How do you all feel? Oh, uh, fantastic. Well, we had a, a pretty good time. Great. Okay, good. And I start to kind of get to my feet. Great. So, yeah, you uh, missed uh, one. I'm sorry. Uh, there was like a, th a magical thing that said no spirit of justice is allowed. And like so, a shield, a force field. We had like a little Star Trek stuck in the buffer pattern. I've only seen two episodes. We thing. were, in fact, on Earth. We did not track the stars at any we point, I assure you. This time, mm hmm. Are, are you talking about like getting stuck in like a teleporter beam kind of yeah. thing, Benny? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Oh, wow. I pulled a Scotty. Okay. Uh, okay. Ho uh, holy smokes. All right. What? Hold on. Wait. <laughs> what, what happened? Oh, you're going to be sad. Oh, no. What happened? Well, it was the 4th of July. I'm s oh, I'm, s I'm sorry, I guess. Wait, was we it like the 4th of July? Like the, the No, actual... no, not like that. Not like that. Uh, okay. we, uh, we were, I don't remember what year we were in. We were, we were in uh, Crescent, Crescent Cove. Uh... Wait, hold on. You went to the island? Holy smokes. How was that? Wait, that's incredible. In 1941. That's How why there it? were Nazis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were, well, hold up, hold up. You oh, found the missile silo. You did That's not include the missile silo in your book, which you assured me was fictional, and yet we were in the very location. I'm quite oh. cross with you, Vion. We had to talk about fiction a little bit, and I don't think it, we quite got there, but you, that's maybe a you task uh, in the future. Oh. Um, you have things to answer for with the Arthurian legends, Benny Beckett. I will not let you forget this either. I may have taken a misstep there on that one. Uh, she's talking to me. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, so y'all fought Nazis uh, uh, at Crest Bay. Okay, well, that's mm -hmm. congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's uh, great. Did you, I hope you won, considering yes. it was 1940s. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. We made great. allies. We fought Nazis. Cadrax suffered a loss of themselves. Uh, we made friends. Oh, no. I um, met a younger version of the woman who gave me the necklace, and she points at the <laughs> points at Wow. And her, her brother, who I also met when I was a little kid, but he was an adult, so that's. So that's why, that's probably why you were sent back, right? That was like the time to go and be a hero kind of thing? Yes. I guess. Most likely. We right. saved all of Port Ruby. If that missile had exploded, it would have taken out the entirety of our city. It did uh, explode, but not within the city. Oh, no, just on you. Yes. Oh, is, and is that how you got knocked out, Doc? I, yes. Was that a euphemism? No, 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 no. I just, I, I, you died is what I'm trying to ask. Yes, That's very how. much so. Got it. Okay. You have a, I mean, I could tell that, you, you know, you, you came back to life because you got kind of like a glow to you. Like, you. I don't know, you got like, I, I, there's no other way to put it. But you're Those like are the burns. Like, oh, no, no, no. There's something else. Like, you, you've got mm. like sort of like uh, some, like an aura of lesbian magic to you. And I don't know, I don't know where I was picking that up from. I have to assume that that was from you resurrecting. No, it was, it was the one who was talking to me, who never explained. She owes me an explanation. Uh, oh, yes, Cadrax got flirted with extensively. It was actually <laughs> really, really fun. Oh, okay, yeah. I miss a lot. What? You know what, that, that would be what you uh -huh. would be sad about, I think, actually. not Yeah, more sad about that maybe than not going to. Incredible. What? Well, well, hey, Doc, that sounds great. If you ever want to go back, I can try to, you know, draw that rune if you want to, you know, ask, you know, whoever this person was on a date or something like that. 1941, I already know. I don't need to ask her. Good point. That's actually a great point that I, that when you put it that way, that's completely correct. July uh, 4th, yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you have the exact date. <laughs> also, good point. I guess that would be the date. Uh, quick question, why... Shoot, why, why did I leave you all in the lurch? That seems strange. The force field that was preventing a spirit of justice. Yeah, no spirit of justice is allowed on the island at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Oh. The one working the, the area was none other than... What was his name again? 
Oh yeah, they said there was there was a guy named Kipper Sweetletrot they were trying to keep out, and I guess that accidentally involved you, even though you weren't from that time, but because you had the Spirit of Justice association, even though you weren't him, you still got caught in the filter. So I don't know if that means anything to you, but I um uh, Rick, I I have Kipper's chain on me, right? It's attached to the the. Well, the magic uh, necklace. I believe, right, so yeah, Benny's got it right now. Yeah, technically you would have it then, Benny, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cause it showed up with me. So I I was giving, Althea and Ozzy handed it to me when they came uh -huh. back and that's how we, we got it. So yeah, I have it. Is, is there any way that you can make a mechanism that uh, is a motor that spins um, like around anywhere on your person? Uh, Les looks around. Ah, uh, and there is only rock and water around us. Ah, uh, when we get back, we'll get one of those tiny little handheld like foam. That's a great hands. idea, <laughs> and we can just load you it on. Use... Yeah, because that uh is just an additional layer of protection I keep forgetting about. So, yeah, Liz, about, yeah. while you're looking around, um, oh, no. you know, on one side of you there's the water, and you know, behind you there's you know a thick forest trees, and. Uh, you see way in the distance above the trees there is a thin pillar of black smoke just rising straight up into the air uh basically due east of where you're at oh there is a fire in the distance in full point perhaps oh. There are individuals that can detail exactly what has occurred in this time. What can we learn? Who lives here? That's a uh, yeah. That's a great. That's a great idea. Uh, should There's we? So much to discover. Head in that direction, y'all, or? Um. Well, yes, there might be someone need for the burning fire. <gasps> yes. Is that sarcasm, Doc? Or? No, we have a specialist. Oh, who better? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay, good point. Uh, should we fly? Ulysses is already like wrapped around Cadrex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Very well. All right, so you're flying. Yeah, um, I'll cast invisibility on us really quickly. Invisibility, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to let you have that since cool. this is a low pressure scenario. But big magic or little magic? Uh, little magic. Yeah, little okay. magic. Um, you soar into the air, and yeah, from the air, it's even more apparent. It's like you see the shapes of, you know, Port Ruby, you know, the, the island of Avalon up to your north. Uh, you can just kind of, you, you can see Central Bay and, and Bray Island in the middle of the bay, and, and it's, you know, it's a very strange thing to see. There's you know, you're used to you're used to this view just as the biggest overbuilt metropolis, you know, in the country, if not one of the ones in the whole world. This is just it's just forests and water and rocky beaches and, and kind of nothing. Um, and you fly about I don't know two miles east or so, and um, you head towards the source of the smoke and you start coming down and uh, you see a small indigenous village. Jake, can I have the village map? It is just right about in the area that you know as, uh, or actually probably it's a little south of the area that you know as Yard Hill. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe a mile or two south of Yard Hill. Um, it is a fairly lively place. Let's say you hover kind of just outside of it, kind of looking in. And, uh, you know, you see a cluster of uh, several roundish bark dwellings. Uh, they have like an aperture of the roof that looks like it might serve like a chimney. Um, they're all different sizes. You know, the longest ones being maybe 60 feet or so. Uh, the men you see are wearing kind of breech clouts and moccasins. Um, some of them also have leggings or robes, um, maybe because it's kind of cool out today. Uh, the women sort of have knee to calf length wraparound skirts. Some have fur robes. 
and people just seem to be going about their business. Um, some of the men are planting seeds in large gardens. The women are tanning hides and sewing and things like that. Uh, some of the children are helping their mothers, uh, and others are kind of just running around playing. Um, the whole scene has kind of a friendly, easygoing vibe to it. And uh, you can see that the pillar of smoke is coming from um, a sort of enclosed like campfire that has some kind of leaves thrown over it. Um, and their burning is what is creating the black plume. What do you want to do? Shall we greet these individuals? Perhaps they can tell us if there is someone who needs saving. Yeah, that's not a bad <laughs> idea. Uh, maybe approach from like just the perimeter and stroll in um, instead of kind not of landing. Not from the sky? Oh. What do you? We have rarely done that. We often just land. Uh, yeah, I guess we could do that and just like uh, I'll turn off invisibility as long as like we're behind something, so it's not just like oof, here we are. Hi. I don't want to scare anybody. We have teleported upon many a person, and they are not too terrified. All right, that's a good point. Yeah, I guess we'll just go down. <laughs> so you're just going to land right in the middle? Okay. Um, you soar down and land kind of right in the middle of everything. And uh, this draws a lot of looks. A lot of, you know, the residents of the village eye you cautiously um, and, you know, incredulously. And um, nobody kind of does anything uh, and then finally a man um i'll say he's played by uh zon mclaren from uh, hawkeye and westworld and stuff like that um he uh, walks over kind of slowly looking maybe not to spook anybody out uh and uh you know because of the translators in your earpieces you can hear him say um hi um well we greet you um, we greet you. Um, I, I, I'm Nelsey. Um, and he seems a little bit nervous as he kind of like looks over your strange clothes. Benny's, you know, black bodysuit and the rest of you are wearing sort of a mishmash of, you know, your, your Colorado winter gear and 1930s, you yeah. know, formal wear. Um, and uh, he, it, we'd, uh, yeah, I think we're maybe a little lost. Um, that we you, don't need to, you know, we don't mean to impose or anything. Did you come in on those ships? No, no. No. Tell us about these ships. Are they large? Are they imposing? Are they useful? Well, um, three ships arrived yesterday from the east. They're Strange design we haven't seen before, uh, uh -huh. although some of the northern tribes have had encounters with such ships. Words are, word is um, the crews are a bit of a mixed bag. Sometimes they want to trade, sometimes they want to fight. There have been oh boy. some fierce battles. They're all things being equal, we'd probably rather they just leave us alone, but you don't always get a say in these things. So we're trying to be cautious, and he kind of points to the plume of smoke. The smoke signal uh, is for other Lenasani villages to you know, let them know to steer clear of the area for now. Oh, your smoke signal brought us. Um, And it is probably polite that we, we perform our introductions. Oh, we are Ulaz Gali. Uh, we are the universe's greatest detective. So if there is anything you need to detect, we will do our best and investigate it. Huh. The universe's Greatest detective. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, um, what manner of being are you? Oh, we are Ulaz Gali. Huh. Oh, oh no, um, we are an alien, but not truly. We are simply, um, a being of another planet who has arrived on Earth and decided to defend this place. Also, we have absorbed the intelligence and the sentience of a human, so we sometimes consider ourselves slightly human. Huh. And, and, and you know, he looks pretty impressed. He said, 
you know, our, our, our legends speak of ancestors from the stars. I was never entirely sure I believed in such things, but I huh. guess I should. Yes, uh, I have allies as well who have their own wonderful origins. Um, shall we speak more, or would you care to talk about? Well, oh, if we can be candid. Often we have traveled through time and we are searching for people who require uh, safety or need to be saved. Um, Ula's glances over um, at like Benny, Cadrax, Dion. <laughs> or just, you know, ass assistance in any way, you know. Well, uh, you know, we're, we're all right right now. Uh, those sailors from those new ships haven't bothered us as yet. Or, um, what's your name? Oh, I'm Benny. Benny. Uh, and you? And he looks over to uh, Cadrax. I'm Caden Dialto. I'm a surgeon. Surgeon? Uh, healer? Surgeon. I heal. They surgeon. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you? Uh, my name is Beyond Vigor. Beyond Vigor. Well, um, you're welcome to stay with us here uh, while you're figuring out what you want to do. There's food and drink, and uh, I'm sure we can find you somewhere warm to sleep. You'll be your guest tonight. Um, I'll go we make the arrangements. Oh, thank and, you uh, so much. He kind of waves and walks away, and, and you're drawing a bunch of strange looks. And while that's going on, um, apparently we have opened up the second tier. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, so that gives you plus one. That is your online course that gives you plus one to any mental attribute not to uh, exceed seven. You get that right now on the spot um, if you know what you want. So let's start with um, Sam. Do you know what you want? My character sheet has been updated to accommodate my intellect. Hmm. Intellect. Boom. And uh, Caitlin. Awareness. Awareness. Boom. Uh, B. Willpower. Ooh. Piling on the willpower, Ulis. Heck yes. Uh, and uh, Vion? I will also follow in B's footsteps. Willpower. <laughs> Zero for three on my bets. Oh! <laughs> what, did, what were you expecting? Oh, I I bet along the lines of what you might want to further stack, and every single one of you swerved it. That's so well, funny. I can't go any higher on anything but intellect, oh. and I like leaving my intellect very low because <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I appreciate you helping me keep in second from the bottom. <laughs> I got That's you. That's awesome. So, the other members of the village kind of eye you, but nobody seems to want to get too close. Um, uh, some of the kids run by, you know, they, they, they seem a little more curious about you. Um, but, uh, you know, nobody, nobody seems seriously scared or anything. Um, and uh, Nelsie comes back and uh, shows you um, a, a place where you can put your things down or, you know, take a nap if you want. And um, after a little while, a meal is served. Um, it's turkey, corn, beans, squash. It's all pretty good. Um, and uh, after the meal, everybody kind of goes back to their business. Uh, but you, as you are kind of sitting finishing up, are approached by uh, a young girl, maybe seven years old, who kind of walks over and very conspicuously stands right next to you, just kind of studying you. I would like to create distance. <laughs> you're you're going to walk away? Uh, just side. <laughs> side. Oh. Like a step. Um, uh, hi. And, and, and when... do, you, do you have a question? Hi. Hi. I saw you fly. Uh -huh. When you flew in, did you see anybody else up there? Um, we weren't looking, but there was I don't a seagull. Think I did. There. I do not think it had malicious intent. I looked okay. Mm. I'm Sasapis. Oh, we greet you. Hi, Sasapis. How's it going? 
We greet you. It's going good. Did you know, my brother Ken, too, he can fly like you. Oh, was really? he in the sky? Yesterday, he went to watch the sailors from the east, and he never came back. Our parents and the other grown-ups are worried about him. They didn't say anything to me, uh -huh. but I can tell. There is a missing child? Uh, well, he's not a child. He's older. I'm What's missing individual. What's your brother's name? Kentu. I can show you where the ships landed if you'll take me to look for him. <gasps> Would you like to fly? He's taken me up before. Oh, I know. I, I know what it's like. You're um, experienced. It, is there is there um a, a parental figure who maybe should know if you're going somewhere? Me. Mm. You can ask my dad if you want. And she points over to Nulsi, the guy who you were talking to when you oh, first came over. Okay. Um, but they let me go wherever I want. Yeah. I just want to make sure no one, you know, we're, you know, we're, we don't know us. So I just want to make sure someone else knows where you are. I'll go tell them. Okay, sure. Yeah. You. That would make me feel better. <laughs> and, uh, very 21st century. No, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. We're strangers. Uh, I'm, stranger dangers is ingrained into her brain. She, uh, she runs over and she, you know, you see her talking to Nalsi and then, um, you know, he walks back with her and he says, um, we would appreciate if you can bring back any information about Kentu. Um, watch out for her. Course. Yeah, I step away again, but in a yes. slightly more combat ready stance. I will watch out. Um, oh, yeah, she's a handful. G noted, noted. Uh, uh, great. Uh, we'll definitely head on out and uh, and go see if we can track down Kentu. Uh, in and and Kentu's been missing since yesterday. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, he was just gonna. Go take a look and see if he can see what um, our mysterious visitors were up to. There have not been any strange noises or ground shaking from these ships that landed with mysterious individuals, have there? Strange noises and ground shaking? Either or. Uh, no. Um... I don't know. I don't think they're that close to the village, though. So I'm, I'm not sure if there were strange noises. We would hear them from here, but we haven't heard anything. Very well. We'll investigate. Um, what do you three go? Uh, you four go investigate. I would like to stay in this village. We saw somebody basket weaving, and they seem like a very good individual to ask pertinent questions to. Yeah, Ulis, if you want to stay, but by no means do you, uh, uh, would you be obligated to go with us? Yeah. You are leaving okay. me with a small human I have to watch for? Uh, we really want to learn how to basket weave. What if it attacks me? I am not supposed to respond. And I mean... she's looking up at you and just like has this big, like, kind of smile on her face. Benny should act as a good diffuser. She has managed many small children. Benny is, if anything, a fuser. It is the very nature of her ability. Uh, but not with children. She can diffuse them. I have seen it. <laughs> Looks ominously over at Benny. He's like looking around and like hands on hips, like looking at the nature. <laughs> very well. Be brave. You got this. I will be brave as I am sworn to do and uphold my oath. Enjoy baskets. Yes, we thank you. Be safe and report everything you hear. I believe our, and they tap their um, communicator. How, are they working? Do I get static? How, they've been pretty- busy. Yeah, you can all you can okay. all hear each other and uh, the translation function is clearly working um, as you can you know understand the people you're talking to. Um, 
And uh, Nelsie says, uh, come on, I'll, I'll introduce you to uh, Anadi, my mother. Um, she's great with the basket weaving. Could you? Um, yes. Uh, if you don't mind hearing a lot of really long, boring stories, you, you'll learn a lot. Um, uh, yes, please. And uh, yeah, he, uh, he takes you over and uh, starts uh, walking you across the village. Um, and we'll come back to that. Um, so the the rest of you, you take right to the air. If it's all right with you, Doc. Of course. I have nothing to fear and, from this course of action. And and Sisophis like grabs your hand and like just kind of looks up with like this big like kind of beaming smile. Great. I'll cast invisibility on all of us. And, and you cast invisibility, and suddenly she's like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Yeah, it is. It works really well if we're quiet as we approach, just a heads up, because um, this doesn't make us, like, it doesn't soundproof us. Although uh, the doc can do that. And I will, be quiet. if necessary. Okay. <laughs> um, and you, you take to the air, and uh, she sort of tells you very quietly, she's like... Go north, and uh, and you start to fly north. Um, and uh, about two miles north, uh, Jake, can I have the uh, the ship map? Oh my god, there's so many maps this episode. <laughs> about two miles north of the village, um, you come to a bank of the river, uh, and um. There you see. Well, I'll tell you what. Huh? You give me investigation rolls. Oh, boy. Uh, boy. Uh, that's going to be a 10 for me. 10. Um, actually, I should, I should say is uh, give me in intellect rolls. No investigation bonuses here. No Just investigation? Intellect. Yeah. Uh, you can do that also if you want. But for this one, give me one intellect roll, and if you want to investigate, then another investigation. Oh, it's a measly eight. eight. Oh, sorry. Eight? I'm sorry. I mean, what an impressive eight. <laughs> uh, so wait. So eight, eight, and... Thirteen. Max die Thir with my sexy new bonus. Thank you, online classes. This has been fun. Thanks. Thanks um, God, here. Continuing medical education. Uh, you see three ships and Cadrax, you studied uh, the history of warfare on Earth before you came here, and you are a good student when it comes to those things. So you recognize these as Viking ships docked offshore. Um, as you get closer, you can see uh, that there are a whole bunch of, you know, sort of kayak type smaller boats on the beach kind of looks like they, you know, they anchored their ships offshore and then rowed to shore in smaller boats. Um, and you can see one person, presumably a Viking, um, standing on the shore, kind of watching over the boats. They're Vikings, they are Vikings, they are Viking warriors. Uh, are you excited about that? No. Are you lying? Yes. <laughs> okay, do you want to go talk to them? Or should we do like a sneak search? Uh... We should accomplish our mission objectives. Mm -hmm. and perhaps fight them later if we need to fight them later if we need to okay great um uh do you want should we sneak into the ships and do some espionage ping Kedrex, you're pinging the ships yeah give me a ping roll Plus, what is it? 
16. Um, there seems to be one person on each ship, probably just, you know, they, they're not doing much. I mean, they're just, you know, kind of left there to keep an eye on things like the guy who's watching on the boat um, uh, or watching the boats on the beach. Um, that's all you really get. I mean, and you get quite a, you know, a rough idea of the layout of the ships, but they're they're pretty small anyway. So, no, no sign of Kentu in any of the holds. Okay, um, interesting. Do we see any signs of? Viking presence aside from the ships and the docks, Rick, from the air. Um, give me an investigation roll. Yes. Uh, Eleven. And there are like footsteps all over the beach. Um. So it clearly looks like there were a lot of people here at some point. You know, the footsteps look you know relatively fresh. Um, you know from um Nelsie that uh these ships arrived yesterday um right but mostly it's just this one guy and he's kind of pacing back and forth just keeping an eye on the landing crafts and uh Sasape says let's go ask him where Kentu is yeah Uh, I, I, I suppose we can do that. I do not see any reason not to. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. No, no, it is too much to hope. Yes, we should. We should talk to them. Great. Okay. You swoop down towards the beach. Uh, still invisible? Not invisible? Currently invisible. Okay. I'll throw a, a sound barrier on us, too. Okay. Inaudible. Uh, invisible, inaudible. Um, you land on the beach. He does not perceive it because you are invisible mm -hmm. and inaudible. Uh, I would say, you know, he is a, a, a fairly um, impressive-looking Viking specimen. Um, if I had to cast him, I'd say maybe Carl Urban. Um <sighs> Uh, I don't think we've used him yet. And um, he, he's just, you know, he's kind of pacing back and forth. He's got like a big axe and he kind of seems to be using it to like, you know, maybe like clean under his fingernails or something. Um, uh, who wants to go ask? I will. <laughs> I mean, I, I will talk to this man. Uh, great. Um, I'm going to drop invisibility on Cadrax alone. Uh, the three of us hanging back. Okay. Um, four of you. Uh, sorry, oh, no, sorry. wait. Uh, oh, right. Ula's okay, yeah, not so there. Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, three. Sorry, you're right. Um, but four because it's a juvenile, yes? Three because the three with juvenile. Yeah. Oh, got it, got it, got it. And, uh, as soon as you appear, the Viking, he's kind of pacing, he's got his back to you, and uh, he he turns to you, uh, you know, as he kind of reaches the apex of his, his pace, he kind of turns back and suddenly sees you standing there, and uh, he just runs up the beach towards you, and it occurs to you that you have seen this Viking running up the beach before, uh, back when Vion postcogged uh, the crystal, it all has a kind of deja vu feel to it for uh, for the three of you. And um, and he runs up to you and he's, you know, who are you? And he kind of raises his axe cautiously. I'm Caden D'Alto. I am a surgeon. Are you alone? Okay. No, but my allies are not nearby me. What do you want? You're not going to get these boats. I do not seek your boats. I seek a human. His name a is human. Kentu. 
Yes. Get out of here. I would like an answer to my query, please. Well, you're not going to get one, so get out of here before I do something you're going to regret. I assure you, there is very little that you will do that I will regret. And he, he kind of raises his axe uh, and sort of, you know, he's like, last chance. Oh. I'll take my shield out. Um, yeah, what is your shield is... Um... My Plasian Buckler. Oh, the Buckler, right. Okay, yeah. Um, can I make a coordination roll? Let's see. Uh... He brings the axe down and you easily just put the buckler up and just block that hit. And uh, he looks a little like frustrated, you know, all of a sudden, like surprised that, you know, you move so quickly and, and were able to block, block his axe so easily. Um, Zing. I'm going to uh, activate Aura. All right, you activate your aura. Mm -hmm. um, and he's, oh, a warrior, are you? Just like you, a Viking warrior. I mean, you know, he looks a little curious at that, but sort of uh, roll for initiative. One. Absolutely. It would be my honor. Oh, hey, 14. 14. Um, okay, you go first. Uh, he kind of readies himself for combat. Your move. I'll bound up with a little bit of glide and pass him. And as I do, clock into the back of him. Give me a prowess roll. I would love to. Okay, not bad. Uh, let's see, four plus seven plus one is a uh, twelve. Oh, he's also really good at combat, but you um, you score a moderate success, and he goes, you know, you 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 clock him in the back, and he kind of stumbles across, you know, the beach and almost falls down, kind of rubs the back of his says, ah. <sighs> and he turns around and kind of raises his axe again, and as he does. Um, Sasapes runs down the beach and she yells, where's Kentu? And as she yells that, she lights up with electricity, this big ball, blue ball of crackling fury. She runs towards the Viking and the angrier she gets, the bigger and brighter the ball of electricity glows and she throws her hand out and uh, like a Lightning bolt shoots just right past you. In fact, Cadrax, give me a coordination roll. I'd prefer to take an interpose. An interpose? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, Cadrax, He's only you, human. Take, you take the hit then. Um, uh, give me... Oh, no. You don't have to roll because you're automatically taking the hit. What is your... Um, your aura is on. What is your aura hmm? level again? Nine. It is or eight, nine. excuse me. Okay, so eight. Uh, okay, Cadrax, you take one point of damage. Um, and Sasape just kind of like runs into you. You kind of, you can't really see her because she's still invisible because of Vion, but you can see the electricity kind of crackling around her now. And it's like kind of creating this almost like electrical little girl, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the negative space, you know, around her. And um, she, she kind of like, you know, runs at you and she, she, she just, you know, kind of, you know, screams again. She's like, make him tell us where Kentu is. Calm yourself, small warrior. If you harm him, he cannot tell us. 
and 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 she, you know she, she she kind of looks up at you and and she closes her eyes and starts to breathe deeply and the lightning ball kind of shrinks around her and it begins to shrink and dim and you know as it crackles you you can again you, you know you sort of see her because of the electric you know that's that's running around her now and uh she seems to be struggling with controlling the lightning ball and and she reaches down to her belt and she pulls out sort of a small like skin you know uh, filled with liquid and she opens it and she drinks its contents and the electricity quickly goes out very good I turn back to the warrior, the larger warrior, not the small one in front of me. As you might have inferred, my ally urgently seeks her brother. Give me a willpower roll. Fanny, Vion, you doing anything right now? Cadmix has a handle, it seems like. I'm just hanging okay. out. I wanted to handle him, but instead. Uh, I usually don't uh, go for this, but considering the context of it, I will cast. Uh, knowing that uh, Cadrex has a, a handle on the um, immediate situation, I would like to cast telepathy. Um, Big magic, little magic. Uh, this is going to be big magic. Uh, give me a big magic girl. Just because uh, we're using little magic for invisibility. Oh, what level are you going for? Uh, I mean, the thing with telepathy is that it just ends up being a willpower versus willpower test. So uh, just to ensure that it works, I'll cast it at uh, level four. Okay. So this is going to be... Uh, that's pumpkin to turn on. So that's eight plus pumpkins. Uh, 13? No, 14. Okay, sorry, yeah. 14, 14. Telepathy is on with big magic. What do you want to do with it? Um... When these questions are being posed to the Viking, I would like to just read surface thoughts. And I'm not trying to like go too deep in, but this is we are looking for a, a possible kidnapping um, situation, uh, looking into a situation. So I would like to just, if this Viking happens to know the whereabouts of Kentu, I would like to just be aware of those. Okay. Um, Kadrex, how do you do on your willpower roll? That was a total of eight because apparently this die like really wants to roll fours. The fours be with me. It's a moderate success. Um, he says, um, my brothers took a prisoner, but I'm not telling you where they went. Vion, give me a willpower roll. Also, yeah. actually, I'm sorry, I, I I totally misread that. I thought it was a different spell. This is tel this is actually telepathy versus willpower. So I would like to cast this at the highest I can at level seven. All right, then you got to recast it. Okay, come back to me. That's eight plus four, twelve to turn on. Okay, you just made it. Great, but you got it. <sighs> um, so telepathy versus willpower. Yeah, so give so me a telepathy. Roll. This is me seven plus roll versus uh, willpower. That's a ten. Okay. Um, when he says, I'm not telling you where they went. Yeah. Uh, you sort of perceive him kind of thinking about the forest, uh, just kind of um, south of where you are standing right now. Kind of, you know, like almost as if he's like glancing over to it, but, you know, with his mind. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's what you're not looking at. That's kind of uh, usually the indicator, right? Um, I can create a telepathic mind-to-mind -mind link, and I want to just send that sensation without saying it to Cadrax and to Benny. Yeah, you both picked that up. Actually, you know what? Screw it. By instinct, I also send it to Ulez. Ulez, you get that? You have no context. <laughs> Ulez... Meanwhile, back in the village, um, Ulez, you are uh, sitting with Anate, um, uh, who is uh, Nelsie's mother, and uh, she is showing you, um, you know, she's teaching you Lenasani basket weaving. Um, and uh, 
you know, she is like an encyclopedia on this. Mm -hmm. um, it's like she like techniques that, you know, clearly take a lifetime to master um, and uh, telling you all the different sizes of baskets and you know, different uses for the baskets. And uh, she's interweaving it with stories about Nelsey when he was a little kid and all the mischief he used to get into. And, you know, and, and, and just, you know, just general stories about other people in the village. And, you know, they, they, they kind of, you know, it sounds like a town, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I promise I had a purpose. I wasn't just like, I want to hang out with yeah. baskets. Um, so my, my, my but, initial... By the way, you can just hang out with baskets if you want. But okay, what's your purpose? Thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, at the beginning of the episode, uh, Vion had kind of said something about like, well, let's can you make a gadget out of this? And, you know, glancing around, there was just like nature all around us and being introduced to this village. I know it wasn't necessarily stated, um, but there's a lot of nature being used to support and create the community um so there Certainly. is like a triple purpose of ulez wants to learn how can a community be like be made while integrating nature they want to learn how can you create things from a tree you just strip a tree and that becomes a basket um and just kind of, i guess just those two things because that is very integral to um just what they want to accomplish later on yeah, um, you are, tell you what, Ulez, give me like an investigation role as you are sort of like just trying to silently observe as much as you can about the village. Did I boost that recently? I did. 12? Oh, wait, uh, 14. You, you know, you take in a fair amount. Uh, you know, you, you think you get a sense of, you know, perhaps, you know, what the dwellings are made of and maybe some of the steps, you know, that were involved in creating them. Although without a very close examination, you probably couldn't figure it all out. Mm -hmm. and, and you kind of watch the men planting in the gardens and, and get a sense of what, what some of their agricultural techniques are like. And you watch, you know, the women tanning the hides and you, you get a sense of how they, they convert like, you know, you know, the hides into usable materials. And, and you see, the kinds of leaves they use to generate the smoke signal and, you know, how, you know, they, you know, how, how they go about looking to gather some of the food that you ate, you know, uh, in your meal. Um, and you pick up a little about all of this stuff. Um, certainly while you are weaving, you know, you, you pick up a little, uh, a little about how they make, you know, materials from, plants and, 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 and just things that grow in the area. Um, Liz is enthralled. Like every time there's a mention of like a new species they haven't heard of, tell me more. What color does it look like? Can I smell it? May I taste it? I do not truly possess taste receptors, but the act alone just seems very tantalizing. And uh, you're making a lot of friends. It's sort of like as the more time you kind of spend there while you're, well, you know, while your team is gone, it's, uh, you know, one by one, the members of the village seem to be warming to you, very interested in you. And, um, you know, they come up, they introduce themselves. Uh, it's generally a cool, you know, kind of fun time for you. And, um, and that's when you get this telepathic sense of what is going on on the beach right now. Um, and oh. uh, a glimpse into the thoughts of this Viking uh, that Vion has sent you. Oh, um, oh, we are very sorry. Thank you. Thank you for this platter of steamed vegetables. We will examine them later. For now, we have to go assist our allies. It seems something good and something potentially... Hmm. I am needed. We thank you and we will return later. With the image of the beach, can I teleport there? Oh, um, I only yeah, give me a teleportation roll. <laughs> uh, Odai applied. <laughs> Fuck. Um, so the yeah, Odai goes off. But hey, my teleport was a 10. Uh, you bamf your way right back to the spot where you arrived. Oh. Uh, and then like they wave over at some children. Oh, hi. Uh there's nobody around here. This is just like the, the shore, you know, where, where Oh, where we originally yeah. arrived. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. 
wow, this is not correct at all. Pitcher, pitcher. Mm. Give me again. Uh oh, die apply. Usually good. Four and four, much better. Uh, eight. And bamf, you appear on the beach uh, right next to your team. Um, uh, Viana, you're all still invisible, but uh, but Cadrax is not, so you can see Cadrax. Um, and uh, uh, you can see this Viking fellow, um, who you know is, is, is kind of standing back from Cadrax at this point. Um, oh, fine, if you will not tell us, we will go. I walk a little closer. Will you be around later to fight? He, he, he kind of looks around like, you know, he's a little weirded out by this, and he's a I will never say no to a fight. I am glad to have met you, although I do not know your name. And he kind of looks around again. I am Bo. Bo. Well, what is your name? I'm Caden Dialto. I am a surgeon. Ah, uh, yes. You said that. And uh, Bo just kind of watches. Uh, what do you do now? Have you won the battle? It was a draw. Oh, okay. We greet you. Oh, we greet you. Good effort. Um, Where's the kid? Where did she go? Is she still vibing? Uh, she's in, she's right here, but she's invisible. Okay, invisible. Okay, perfect. So I still can't. Okay. Uh, are our allies nearby? Do we have to go to a forest? We really desire a forest. Yeah, sorry. That was me. I sent oh. that. Not, yeah, to you. And I'm just oh, sending this telepathically me. to everybody. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to jump into your mind like that. Um, yeah, uh, you know, Bo glanced over at the forest. I figured that's probably the next place to go explore. Okay. And Shisape says, let's go. All right, Zaba, that sounds great. Uh, Cadrax, do you mind if we put you in specific like childcare duty, making sure that uh, we don't lose our little friend here? I just make very hard eyes at Ulez. We are here to assist. <laughs> yes, I am. Anymore. Oh, great. And then I will bring you back into the invisibility uh, burst cloud, which we have established means that you can see the other invisible folks. Confirmed. When you want it to be that way, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> I love this game. We're going <laughs> to solve all our inconsistencies. So, um, Magic. So, yeah, you 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 head towards the forest. Um, give me investigation rolls. Eleven. Six. Big six. <laughs> Ten. Oh, God, I have so much more math to do. Oh. Sixteen. Sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> what did you just oh. say? Hold on. That can't be right. It's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are yeah. Really with the high universe. intelligence bonus and a high skill modifier and a good roll on the dice. Yeah, why not? I'm here for it. Dang. <laughs> Clearly. So are your dice. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, you look around by the beach and by the edge of the forest, and Ulez, um, you spot a trail. Uh, it's not like, you know, not something that's pre-existing. It looks like, you know, a trail that somebody went this way and kind of trampled the ground beneath them. Mm. Um, you know, you can see broken twigs and you know, crushed sort of ivy on the ground and, and, and you know, the, just clearly a whole bunch of people passed this way. Um, and uh, you tell the others? Yeah. Ah, uh, over here, over here. Examine these broken twigs, this crushed ivy. And <laughs> what was the very first detail? <laughs> Uh, just that there was a trail. And a trail <laughs> that I have revealed. Sounded better in my head. <laughs> wow, that is great detective work there, Ulez. We should probably follow it. Good idea. 
we will be in the middle. And you start walking into the forest. And uh, as you walk, you can all sort of hear Sasabe's kind of like talking, you know, or kind of whispering loudly. And she, the lightning comes when I get angry. Uh, I'm learning to control it by not being afraid, but sometimes that's not enough. So dad made this for me. Uh, and, 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 you know, she kind of holds up the little skin that she drank from. Um, it helps when I'm having trouble taking back control. It's just water mixed with like ground up leaves from spotted water lilies. They grow all over here. Uh, oh, wow. And she sort of points into the forest, onto the floor, and she's like, there's one. Oh. I would like to go and grab it. <laughs> yeah, Ulez, you pick a spotted water lily. Going into my inventory. Um, and Ulez, when you pick it, you realize you've seen this flower before. You actually receive one in the mail uh, from um, your, your good friend. Dr. Uh, Doctor, um, uh, oh my King. god, uh, King, right? Dr. King, Dr. King yeah. right? Yes, Dr. Cyrus King. Um, he sent you one telling you about how they were endangered uh, in your time, and uh, you can see that is this is the same species, clearly. When I pick it, I am going to um uproot it so it's got some nice little dangly roots, and I'm gonna uh find something that is damp and moist kind of like grab a leaf make a little pocket of some water and just like utilize some of the techniques that i learned today to create like a little flower holder to keep the roots moist and i'll put it in uh some pockets that i probably have jose you got an empty space in the shell the chest shell oh, most likely <laughs> yeah <laughs> this part is just for flowers <laughs> no all right, yeah, you can add that yes. to your inventory now. You have a spotted water lily. Um, and You'll get better at it, though. It's, you know, it's just practice. Your descendants will not, though. I have been... They also will just need practice. My descendants? Yes. The ones who come after you. The ones, the hundreds of revolutions in the future. You're weird. The feeling is mutual. Small That's warrior. Fair. And uh, like, but I like you. You are also acceptable. Allies. Allies. I'm just kind of cheers. <laughs> and uh, you walk through the forest um, south. And um, the trail is relatively easy to follow. The Vikings do not seem to have been trying to cover their tracks uh, or did a terrible job at it. And uh, after about, I don't know, a mile and a half or two miles or so, you start to hear sound of voices and some kind of activity uh, coming from a clearing just ahead of you. Jake, can I have the clearing map? What? I'm just in love with all the maps. Yes, look at it right there. We got it. Wow. And uh, you can't quite see what's going on from where you are now. Does anybody want to go look? Does everybody want to go look? What do you want to do? Cadrax, give me a ping roll. 14. You pick up 40, 45 people in the clearing ahead. Um, they are busy doing some kind of work. There are 40 to 45 individuals. Is one of them Sasabe? Uh, sorry, is one of them Kentu? I cannot tell that by echolocation. Hmm. Do you want to sneak up or do you want to do a bad idea? Oh. This is a very large number of people and we have a secondary objective and I put my hand on Sasabe's. Let's go with a smart idea and uh, sneak in, continuing to be invisible. Okay. I'll shift out of Aura for 
well, I suppose I have for ping. Uh, so mm -hmm. I shift for an odd ability. Plus, Sasapis might touch me and then it would injure itself. Hurt itself in its confusion. Still invisible, right? So you walk towards the clearing. And as you get closer, you start to see the shapes of people moving through the trees. Lots of them, just like Kadrak said. And as you get even closer, you can start to see into the clearing. It's fairly large clearing. Um, and you can see that the Vikings have dug a very, very deep hole. And they have also constructed an apparatus of ropes and pulleys strung through a sort of primitive scaffolding that they've made from trees and attached to the trees surrounding the clearing. Using the ropes and the pulleys, they have suspended a large rectangular stone box, and they seem to be trying to carefully position it over the hole. Sitting off to the side, kind of watching, you can see there's one, most of these guys are, you know, they're like the Viking you saw on the beach, kind of, you know, young, fit, kind of, you know, warrior types. There is one very old Viking, um, say if I had to cast him, he's uh, played by Stellan Skarsgård. Uh, he's got a long, thick beard, and just by after watching for a few seconds, you can kind of gather that he seems to be calling the shots here. And uh, a few feet away from him, you see an indigenous teenager, uh, maybe 18 years old, uh, who is uh, played by uh, Defaro Wunatai from Reservation Dogs. Um, and uh, his hands are in the air, sort of like he's, you know, being held prisoner, but he doesn't really look too, you know, scared or anything right now. Um, and there's a Viking kind of guarding him with a sword, but, you know, it, it looks kind of, you know, very kind of low pressure, you know, it's like he, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to be trying to get away or move or and the other guy doesn't really, isn't really, you know, paying much attention to him. Um, uh, I'm going to, ex oh, sorry, go ahead. Do you yeah, not no, act in, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, Got sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, a uh, little just confusion there. What were you saying, Sam? Do not act impulsively small warrior. There are many here and we do not want Kentu to become harmed in a melee. When the time mm. is right to act, then we will act with decisiveness, but until then, hold your fu lightning. <laughs> and she, she nods at you. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to extend this telepathic link to Kentu to see if we can just sort of send a reassuring message. Um, but you never turned off telepathy, right? No, I haven't turned it off yet. Okay, give me a, give me a telepathy roll. He <laughs> he. All right, this is seven plus roll. Eight. Um. He is not a willing yeah. subject, but he's not an unwilling right. subject. He's not like trying to hold out either. So I'm going to say that that's close enough. Okay. Uh, what do you say to him? Oh, well, I don't say anything. I'm just going to kneel next to his sister and say like it. Uh, we're now connected. Um, if you want to let him know that we are nearby and ask if he needs any help. And she says, uh, um, can't do. I'm here. And, and looking into the clearing, you can see him kind of, she's like, me and my friends are going to save you. Friends. All right. And, and, he kind of thinks back and he's just like, Sasapis, where are you? And she's like, we're in the trees. And he's like, stay there. Uh, hey, Kentu, how's it going? This is Vion Vigor, uh, one of the friends, <laughs> aforementioned friends. Um, are you, have you been hurt at all? And he kind of look at, look at, look at, he looks really super weirded out now. Like, how are you? How am I hearing you? Uh, Where same are you? way, same way that you can fly. A uh, little bit of magic, I suppose. Huh. I'm okay. Okay. 
just keeping an eye on things. Very well. We will do the same then. Um, and I'm going to try to keep this communication open as long as I can. If anything... And he's like tapping. Yeah, I'm like, ask him what's happening. <laughs> oh, uh, also, uh, his, uh, my friend Benny here uh, is also tied. Yeah, Benny. Not, yeah, uh, lines. Oh, I'm tied in too. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I thought we're still tied in. Oh, that's right. I and I love the idea of us never fully establishing any shorthand for who is currently telepathically connected. Oh, hi. Sorry, Benny. Nice to meet you. There's a lot going on. Lots of voices. Sorry about this. Um, can you tell us what's happening? They are burying this box. Weird. Yes. I also thought it was weird. You know, have they said, have you seen anything about what it might be? No, but they definitely all seem to be pretty spooked out by whatever it is. Yeah, they seem very serious. Um, two questions. Uh, one, do we see runes on the box? Um, give me you need an investigation roll. All right. Ones we've perhaps seen before in the sewers of Port Ruby. 11. You don't see anything like that, you know, at least not from where you are. Uh, the second, does our position correspond in any sort of rough way to where we had been when we were in the sewers? We, because no, we've been flying, sewers, we have a sort of aerial sense of where we are. Yeah, when you were in the sewers, you were actually, I believe, all the way in the south of Baronsdale. Like, oh, uh, yeah. you know, right. It's where you found Tules, so it's like uh, just about as far south as you can get in Baronsdale. Right now, you are just about where Yard Hill is, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so not close to this location. And we're invisible, but, right? Or still. Yes. Yeah, invisible, invisible and, and I assume in audible. Yeah, in yeah Kad Kadrix could go, if you want to fly up and just get a closer look while we're invisible. Actually, this is going to oh, hit my microphone. Uh, uh, you know, this is not a bad idea. Actually, um, if, you, if, you, if we can do it quietly, Doc, could you get me like right above that box? To use post cognition upon it? Yeah. I turn to Benny and Ulez. I'm transferring custody of the small warrior to you. Okay. Please return it when I return. And Sasape so takes one of each of your hands. Oh, yeah. Bang, bang, hold on. <laughs> I turn to the small warrior. I will return shortly. Uh, do you consent to being with I'll lifted? stay here. Good. Uh, absolutely, and thank you for asking. Very well. Uh, we will proceed uh, invisibly and inaudibly to float uh, over and on to uh, like cat burglars, but instead of going down a rope from the top of the museum skylight, uh, we ha just have sky flight. Caper music starts playing quietly in the uh, <laughs> brain connection. <laughs> you fly towards the box uh -huh. and you are just about over it. Um, Beyond, you're going to reach down and touch it is the idea? Yeah. And I'll ping. And, post and postcog, but not broadcast. Mm -hmm. Um, Kadrax, give me a ping roll. 13. You don't perceive anything inside. Um, seems like a hollow space as far as you can tell. Um, Vion, you gonna try and postcog? I would love to. Okay. You reach down and touch the box. Uh -huh. And when you do... Mm -hmm. You hear like a creaking, kind of stretching sound, like, eh, eh, and just the little bit of extra weight you put on it causes one of this thing, one of the ropes suspending it to snap. And the whole pulley system just fails, and the box comes crashing down and onto its side, and its heavy, kind of stone lid just kind of falls ajar and the Vikings all freeze 
and they watch the fallen stone box, clearly terrified of something. And just then, a wisp of red smoke filters out of the box, and it quickly becomes a cloud. Oh, no. And the cloud starts to collect, all pulling towards a central spot where it slowly takes on the vague shape of a smoky red person with no discernible features. And on that, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back in 10 minutes. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, we are almost uh, to the after credits lore drop, uh, and uh, we are super grateful. Uh, we'll see you right back here in 10. Don't go nowhere. Oh, my God. Welcome back. Um, when we uh, last left off, um, uh, and the Vikings were burying a giant uh, kind of stone box. The box fell, and out of it came um, the red mist. And uh, I also see, by the way, we are just about 50 bucks away from our after cut. It's large drop. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, the red mist collects into uh, the vague shape of a smoky red person with no discernible features. And for a moment, everything is silent and totally still, like cut the tension with a knife, kind of quiet. And then some of the Vikings kind of grab for their spears and they throw them at the red mist, but the spears just passed right through the smoke just harmlessly. And the old Viking leaps to his feet and he yells, retreat back to the ships. And the other Vikings all turn and run right back toward the path that you are standing on and just, just, plow right into your invisible selves some of them are a little weirded out but they don't stop they just keep hey, i have i currently have handholds on on our friend who has handholds on my other friend and i want i'll try to like start moving and pull us out of the way yeah, i'll be a little body shield they just tear north um they're not stopping for anything they're not even interested in what the, the invisible thing they ran into was um, they disappear into the forest, running as fast as they can. The only one who doesn't run is the old Viking. Maybe he's too old for that or whatever. Um, for whatever reason, he stands his ground just kind of watching the red mist. And they kind of look at each other. The red mist's head sort of turns up towards him. And the old Viking shouts at the red mist and he says you don't think I'm ready for you and the red mist looks up at him and then it turns towards the path where the Vikings ran and then it looks back to the old man and then right before your eyes it disperses into a red cloud that blows towards the trees and follows the Vikings into the jungle leaving the old Viking and Kentu behind. Uh, hey, should we talk to this Viking? Find out information about the Red Mist, like right away? And oh. Sisape says, you know, make, make, make me seen. Uh, yeah, I, I drop a visibility on Sisape's. And she just runs into the clearing and she's Kentu! And she like runs right to him and kind of like hugs his leg. I would like to start moving in just in case this Viking guy tries anything. I don't want to leave mm -hmm. her sure. alone following. Yeah, her. what what are you all doing? Same thing? I would like to pursue the mist. We should see if we can protect those Vikings from the mist or at the very least from Doc, I'll themselves. go with you. All right. I will bring Pandora with me. Is that me? Yes. That was oh. you. You opened the box that unleashed the thing. <laughs> you know what? That's deserved. Yeah. All right. <sighs> um, okay. So we've got Team Cadrax and Vion and Team Benny and Ulez. Um Cadrax, Vion, uh, you're you're flying that way or Yes, follow Alacrity. Okay. 
This means that uh, anyone who was previously inaudible and looking to stealth will not be inaudible. Just... I think we're visible gotcha. now, yeah. aren't we? I didn't know if it was yeah. dropped on everyone, but just wanted to... Uh, I think, isn't it... Is it a burst thing? Or am I wrong on that? Yeah, but... It's so, like, if you drop one person, does it drop everyone? We've let him selectively drop it oh, okay. earlier, okay. Okay. so... Okay. I'm gonna roll with that, even if it's not right. It's magic. Um, what is right? <laughs> So, so who is invisible and who is not, Vion? Uh, I only dropped it on Sasapis, so if, uh, but we're all right now mentally connected. So if anyone else wants it dropped, I can totally drop it. Drop. All right, Ulez, you're visible. I'll drop too. Yeah, right. I think maybe drop. Danny, you're visible, Doc. Danny. Just you and me. All right, Vion, Cadrex, you pursue the Vikings in the Red Mist. We'll get back to you, Benny, Ulez. You suddenly become visible. And both Kentu and the old Viking are sort of, you know, a little startled to see you appear out of nowhere. And uh, Sisapes points is like, those are my friends. Hi, uh, we, but in, in well, we are allies. Well, we greet you both. Hi, I'm Kentu. Uh, We're I, glad you're okay. I, I, like she's like looking, just like as yeah. she says that, like is he okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm fine. I I, okay. I let them capture me. I just wanted to see if I can get a sense of what was going on here. How uh, old? Well, um, your family was worried about you, so maybe I, I, I'm not. It's gonna, easy I'm not, for I'm me to escape if I uh, if I need That's, to. I could just. I was curious about that. Yeah. Uh, so, not much of a risk, but uh, I didn't really learn much until I guess Personal. that happened. Mm -hmm. Which was, and I turned to the, the Viking guy. Yes, you. May you please introduce yourself. Let's make a willpower roll. Ah, I will, because my willpower. Oh my god, you're is like bumping. Yeah, you're like you're, you're like the willpower champ now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. This is the. Or are we the willpower crew right now? I love this. Ah, for everyone is ten. the Cadrax. Ah, that's true. Actually, that's oh, right. Cadrax, ten. Double digits. I'm Torsten. Torsten. And uh, I'm the leader of this crew. And what uh, was that all about? I wish I had time to tell you the whole story, but all of our lives are in great danger. That monster is going to kill my men as well as anyone else it can find. Why? The only... That's what it does. It wasn't because it was, you know trapped or like how did you just does it? that can we walk and talk do you require resistance i could create a mobility aid should you need it no i have a feeling my i'm best served waiting here and please speak the only reason that thing didn't finish us off is that he thinks i have a weapon that can hurt him only i don't one of my it's men ran off with it yesterday morning. He was afraid of the monster. They all are. So he stole our only protection and he ran away to the east. It's a metal orb about the size of an apple. It has power over him. If we can get it, we can use it to force him back into the sarcophagus. When it's sealed, he can't escape from it. Is the if I look at the box, is it still intact or did it break when it and fell? It looks intact. Okay. And and Kentu just kind of like shakes his head at the old Viking and he's bringing your evil to bury in our shores. Yeah, what's up you, with that? that? You and your people are monstrous. And Torsten kind of just nods and looks at the ground. And Kentu looks at you, Benny, and Ulez. We have to stop that thing before it gets near the village. Yes, definitely. We do. Um, is is it... Sapes? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was just going to address the old man. Is it like did, did you, you brought it here? Is it from where you're from? Is it did, has it always been? Are there more? What? What? There are more? It's not, it's not from where I'm from, but it's the only one you'll find here, and we don't have time for this. We do. We must. Okay, but it would be helpful, mm -hmm. actually, so we can 
do our helpful here. You're asking us to to take the down only... a creature, but you you will not provide the, any information so we properly so we can properly understand what they are. Oh. It's a monster. The only thing that will affect it is the orb, and without the orb. Nothing will affect it. Is it there is lore? Is there history? That's great. I've got that. You said it's unstoppable. What? El what? What? Where did it? Do you know where it came from? Does it have Why a story? Why did you get to call out a monster? You are wasting time. That's great. This is helpful. Talk. And Kentu sort of looks at you, and he's like, "I can't take this chance." There's people chasing. We have people on it right now and we will Sasabes, go help. take your friends find the thief find the orb I'm gonna go see if we can, we can do about this monster in case you can't find it uh, it's I think they're still in your brain so there you have some allies headed that direction stay in touch with them I'll get there before they do. And he <laughs> shoots into the sky much uh, faster than Kadrax uh, flies. Uh, incoming uh, help. Kenty's on his way. Oh, uh, great. <laughs> and uh, Torsten, if you find the orb, bring it here to me. I'm the only one who knows how to use it. We do not trust you. Yes, yeah, see, we've been burned. Then you but will die. That's where, okay, listen, listen. I just need some more information. You're being very cryptic and making a lot of judgments. And I would just like to form my own opinions, which I'm sure will be similar if you can give me the context. Benny, I have a compromise. Why don't you go search for this thief who has the orb? I will stay with Torsten and I will utilize some techniques that we have learned from Vion. Benny thinks about investigating by herself and how poorly that would go. <laughs> um, I love the initiative. I don't know if I'm capable of finding this person by myself. Understood. Um, okay, let's go I, now. Well, you, I, you stay right there. Like, I mean, you can, we can split for, like, a little bit, and you can catch up to me faster than I can catch up to you, but, like, I just, overall, I think that, like, I'm not the universe's best investigator. We understand. We will assist first, and then we will tell you what our plan is, and you can offer insight. Okay, cool. I'm still very annoyed with you. I point at Torsten. This is, you're so cryptic. This is weird. <laughs> and, 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 and he kind of, you know, shakes his head at you. Clearly, a man not used to being questioned um, very, <laughs> very often. If, even. Everything, ha everyone has a story. Everything has a story. Like, that, why is there not a story? It's just it evil. Just that's be a that's, monster. That, that's just yeah. it. It's that's just all they have. I'm baffled, and Benny's annoyed. <laughs> so, what are you uh, doing? Taking off in the direction that he told us uh, the thief was eastward. East. Is that where the? No, boats are north. What's east? East from here is would still go ocean, yeah. right? Uh, east, east from here the... now goes into okay. Baronsdale. Uh, Jake, you want to put up the clearing yeah, map I'm again? To... Okay. So the clearing is okay. right there in the center, um, right? Like again, right about where Yard Hill Got is, it. and uh, um, so you take to the air. Um, wait a we... minute. <laughs> You no, fly. no, you can't fly. Yeah, no. <laughs> that was amazing. That was really good. Oh we go. We I forgot. You don't have to fly. And then go. Wait, really, it's not... just ubiquitous. They they forget that it's just one person. It's just, <laughs> I was all chosen one and like. Fly. I was. Whoa. <laughs> Are you all right, Doc? What's going on here? What do you? <laughs> what? I think if anything, we'll probably start blooping. Yeah, in our direction. walking and, and teleporting. He said a day ago that the person went away. Yeah. Would right. we be able to any sort of like uh, how far someone could get in a day? Um, probably have that knowledge to some degree. Like if we walked like 
how long would it take me to walk across <laughs> Baron's Dale? Like, Thomas <laughs> might know. Uh, let's see. So Thomas um, is with us still. That's right. How far do you think someone could get in a day? We're walking. We're going to start walking. If they were headed uh, eastward. 12 kilometers, would you say? Uh, right, because this is also like, um, if you, it, it, unfamiliar territory to this individual. And, and, and also, this isn't optimized uh, for um, uh, untrained pedestrian traffic, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to be, you have to have some right. bit of survival. Like crossing through the like- city. that can speed up your, your give me um an intellect role legend benny we also we also asked uh, sasape mm-hmm. for for her input too because she's from here eight almost max that's all yeah, <laughs> that's good uh 12 <laughs> that's about as good as i can do Les, you remember hearing on television while you were watching with beyond that the average human foot speed is eight miles an hour Okay. Um, if it's been a day, that's 24 hours. That means maximum if they were walking at average speed nonstop for 24 hours, that's uh, about 190 miles or so uh, maximum. But the odds that anybody would be walking that fast nonstop for all that time, you know, through forests, they're probably going mm-hmm. slower than that, mm-hmm. establishes sort of a hard boundary that they could not have made it 190 miles away. Yeah, so um, if you think maybe they're going half their speed if they have to be slow, and they probably were only going, I mean, they're in waking hours. Mm-hmm. Daylight hours. Not all, like, they can't stop. Or they can't not stop. So, if you think maybe a total of like, 50, 40? Eight total hours of walking oh, at half hours. speed. Okay, yeah. Out um, of like a 16 hour day. At half speed, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm making. I'm like, this is totally a shot in the dark. But that's this is where my logic is taking me. <laughs> Someone who is running, <laughs> like they're trying to go, but they're unfamiliar. This is not a street, but they're tr- they're scared, so they're trying to keep moving. So that's that's my that's me throwing that out there. Okay, so like th- thirty some miles east. I mean, I we're blitzing. Like we're kind of doing like. Well, we're all holding hands, walking a little bit, teleporting, maybe ending up in the wrong place. Shit, teleport and like keep, keep walking, teleporting. It, it all looks the same, but like Ules is yeah, trying to use markers, like new trees that they've learned, different flora, different fauna. Ules, give me an intellect roll. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's my worst roll today. Uh, 10. 10. Um, <laughs> fail. You you don't necessarily really pick anything up. Um, it's just you don't know if you're just not on the right track or if the signs are, you know, just too subtle because it's only one person, mm-hmm. you know, um, as opposed to like, you know, the, the procession of 40 people who made the trail that you followed before. Um, after a little while, um, you know what? Let's say... Uh, uh, hang on a sec. Sorry, let me just put Hanging a pin on. in this for a moment. Okay. Yeah, I just trying to decide if we have some kind of audio issues. Um, yeah, I... there's been quite a few folks chatting about that, and I'm not. I'm not Look, she was just sure. Pupsetti spaghetti because there was a dog in her world. <laughs> <laughs> that issue should this have is... resolved right now. We have removed all of that. Dogs from her world. Yeah, I'm, I'm being told uh, some recurring sound distortion issues. Sound distortion. Um, I mean, sorry. Do you have background sound? I can hear your your white noise. I don't think anyone's mentioned Rick. I think I've gotten someone's pegged me, and someone's got Sam. Well, maybe Rick. I think once, but I know I've gotten someone said I've been robotic. Sam, yeah, grow nothing up. Nothing that I've heard on my end. Oh, never. <laughs> Also, this is not related right. to that, but B, I don't think I've ever heard your O's before. The you had a, about, I heard it real quick. I was like, we are our northerners. <gasps> I was like, yeah, I haven't heard it. I don't think I've heard it before. That um, makes sometimes me the robotic right, we're just gonna roll. artifact of bandwidth, the fact that I was also apparently lagging a little bit earlier suggests that the sound is also a function of bandwidth. Uh, All right, we're just going to roll ahead and hope for the best always. here. Okay. So, um, you you keep trying to search for signs of uh, the trail, mm-hmm. um, and um, 
let's catch up with Cadrax and Vion. Um, you fly through the jungle. The red mist you cannot see. You, you have absolutely no idea what is you know what its ability to disperse is. You know it, it sort of seems to have vanished into the ether. Um, the Vikings you can tell are sort of ahead of you, um, and uh, they a, a, as you you can hear the sound of the waves and the beach coming up ahead. And uh, as you fly towards the beach, you can sort of see Kentu <laughs> zip by overhead. Um, and you make it to the beach, and standing on the beach when you get there, um, you can see the Vikings are drawing their weapons, starting to circle each other. Some of them are starting to fight. Some of them are, you know, running towards the boats. Others are chasing them towards the boats. Right, you know, right along the shoreline. These, you know, 40 Vikings or so uh, are starting to engage in battle. And Kentu zips right down and lands on the beach. And he thinks to you, you know, you hear his voice in your head. It looks like they're going to kill each other. That is exactly uh, what they are going to do. And it might affect you as well. And, and there's silence for a moment. We can't let this happen. We're all related. We have to stop them. Precisely. And he kind of zips into the air and flies down to the beach. And right down at the beach shoreline, there's one Viking who's about to raise his axe on another's head. And Kentu just kind of like grabs him and picks him up and zips him back towards the woods. Uh, and, 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 pushes him down to the ground so, and you hear him think what do we do more of that harder to kill yourself without sharp weapons protect them All from right. each other and from themselves uh be on yeah you want some weapons collected yes great uh uh i'm not the uh, uh Sam, uh, Vikings would have had metallic weapons at this point, correct? Uh, yes, and yes, they would be ferromagnetic, if that's what you're thinking. Thank you so much, my friend. Yes, <laughs> I would love to just use some elemental control. Uh, elemental control or is it energy control? Energy control. I believe energy control uh, for magnetism. Uh, per, yeah. uh Caitlin's character. In, yep, uh, energy control. All right, give me an energy control roll. All right, this is to turn on, and I'm trying to do it at level seven. Here we go. Oh, I rolled a one. Can I use a point of determination? Hmm. The general effect of energy control is basically a blast of that type of energy. Um, but if you if you will spend a point of determination on it, I'll, I'll I will let you play this. Don't. And essentially use the blast instead of attack to try and knock things That's out great. of people's hands. That's great. I was just going to cast blast and then do that instead. Uh, this is better. Um, yeah, if that's okay with everybody. Can it be a yoink instead of a yoink? Oh, pull to me? Yeah, if you're going to spend determination, it could be a yoink. Just all of the Thor hammers at once. Yes, exactly, to me. <laughs> Which I will instantly regret as I watch. Yeah, that is true. It is kind of like the thing with like the swords pointing at everything, but you did it to yourself. If, <laughs> if, if it's it successful, right. then I feel like I have one trick up my sleeve in regards to that. Big magic or little magic? Uh, I'm doing big magic with the or the invisibility. Uh, I, I, I'm going to drop invisibility. We're already yeah. doing stuff. Yeah. So small magic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, give me, give me uh, what level you're going for. This would be. Um, I mean, let's your go small, all in. Three. Uh, What's your small magic? Uh, three. Okay, yeah. I'll... Here we go. Take this roll. Another one. Uh, four. You cannot seem to get it on. Um, Sam, I see your face. Why is um, everyone and, accusing uh, me of things right now? Um. 
say, yeah, you, you, you try, but, you know, maybe the weirdness of, of, of being confronted by the Red Mist or just the general chaos of the circumstances, you cannot seem to concentrate enough uh, to turn on um, energy control. But the two of you are visible now, and some of those Vikings come charging up the beach right at you and can to uh, okay. roll initiative. Quick question uh, for Vion and Benny. Mm -hmm. uh, you this? spoke of... The chain that Kipper Sweetletrot forged in life, was yeah. it returned to Vion or does it remain with Benny I right now? I said that I was trying to return it to v Vion, but I think I got talked over. So I said it. I don't know if anyone else heard it, but. <laughs> Sorry. If, if you it said me. it, then Vion's got it. I'll, I'll, I'll give you credit for that. Yeah, if you gave it to me, I got it. Or I started to yeah. say it. I know that was my intention, and then the scene got uh, exciting. So I <laughs> forgot to, to say it. I, I have like half talking. Half ear out for it so i wanted mm -hmm. to double check uh it'll be a 13 for cadrax by the way wow uh 13 they're more coordinated than they used to be it's almost like as uh i figured out how the blast rules worked i specked harder into it <laughs> also because it's a counter to nullification and a whole bunch of other things very important beyond how do you do it's great four <sighs> you're on a roll, Ooh, roll another one it's not oh, a good roll but you sure are on one. <laughs> I, I can't do worse. <laughs> okay, so that is going to be Cadrax, then Kentu, uh, then the Viking, uh, and then the four Vikings are charging up the beach at you, all, you know, axes, swords, armed with slashing weapons, let's say. Um, what would you like to do? Fight all of them. Uh, but in all seriousness, I will blast ideally toward a stun outcome in a burst. Okay. Um, give me a blast roll. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, 12. 12. Okay. That is a major success. Um, the Vikings, all four of them, are sort of knocked back. Um, you can tell they, they definitely felt that. Um, none of them are knocked out. Um, but uh, they... Um, I'm going to say they are stunned enough so that they're going to lose their first turn. Um, Kentu uh, passes his turn up. Uh, the Viking that he picked up from the beach and flew away from that confrontation, um, he kind of grabs like uh, like a, a strap that he's got like sort of like around his torso and he ties that Viking to a nearby tree branch. Um, like around his arm, uh, you know, with a very solid looking knot. Um, and that, uh, that brings up Vion. Uh, little magic didn't quite pan out. Let's do big magic. Um, I'm going to cast emotional control. I would like to uh, do that with burst. And I just want to calm these fine folks down. Okay. So you're doing this with your big magic. So now you're turning off yep. telepathy. Okay. Um, what level are you going for? Uh, to make it a little bit easier, six. I'll okay, just drop it down me, one level. Give me a big magic roll. All right, this is eight plus roll to turn on. That for, now I got pumpkin. All right, so it's fourteen. All right, so you have emotional control turned yeah. on now, and this, uh, yeah. for me, this is six plus roll uh, versus their awareness. Versus their awareness. Yeah. Okay. And what 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 is what is the emotional, what, what, what emotion are you trying to convey? Um, like uh, the, uh, like the, uh, cause it's usually like one word, I think like the one word equivalent of like, let's just be a bunch of like Ponzi's like, just, let's just chill out. Calm. Calm. Cause the thing is, here's, I, I've seen the effects of red mist before the red mist doesn't go off of anything but rage. I want to combat that rage even if they're trying to hurt each other, if I can reduce the amount of rage in, in their bodies and in their minds and in their souls, the damage they do to each other will therefore be reduced, even if they're compelled to physically swing at each other. 
reducing that rage will reduce the effect. Like um. that. Um, give me an emotional control roll. Six plus roll. Uh, that is going to be a ten. Okay, so kind of right in the middle there. Okay. Two of those Vikings kind of seem to chill a little bit. Okay. The other two kind of look like, you know, they are getting ready to continue into battle. Um, I'll take it. And one of them charges at you and swings his axe. Sure. Uh, what are you doing? Um, I will try to, <laughs> oh boy. I'll try to dodge. All right, can you what would, uh, actually, what would prowess give me, Rick, on a combat? Prowess would give you like a parrying move, you know, like trying to like block, you know, like his arm or something like that. Hey, if I'm, if I'm trying to take their energy and course in different direction, I think it makes sense that I would then use my prowess to also do the exact same. I'm not trying to stop them. I'm not trying to, you know, parry against and hurt them. I want to just swing into, uh, into their rage and try to quell it. So I'm going to do a prowess roll. Okay, give me that. All right. Five plus roll. Great. I love this game. One, six. <laughs> okay, so the Viking uh, hits you with the axe. It, say, chops you in, let's say, your right arm. Oh. Um, it is, you take, one, you take, do, do, do. you take two damage. No, sorry, three damage. Okay. So, um, great. Not doing great. And Keep the next coming. Viking, uh, yeah, sorry, there are four of them, uh, or but now there are only two of them who are attacking now. So the next Viking uh, goes for Cadrax, oh, um, sorry, Cadrax. and swings with uh, better man than you. Let's say a hammer, like a big kind of you know Viking Thor mm -hmm. type hammer. And um, how are you uh, dealing with this? Uh, shields up. Buckler's out. Let's go. All right. Give me a prowess roll. Absolutely. Uh, so let's see. Awesome. 13. You don't even have to use the buckler. He's, he's, he's kind of, you know, maybe disoriented from, from being infected by the red mist. But, you know, he sort of swings wildly and just kind of misses you by a mile. Um, and, uh, before we, it's going to bring you back up Cadrax, but before we get to that, we're going to zip back, uh, to the other team. Um, you are walking through the jungle and, uh, Sisapes is like, wait a minute. Didn't he say he stole the thing and ran into the East, but like, weren't there ships like way up North? North east instead of east. Ah, uh, if we can find a trail where like up from the ships, maybe. I know where all the trails are. Come on. Oh, so yes. And um, you follow her. Me and B are doing uh, so much all... math in our DMs, by the way. <laughs> it's not even okay. <laughs> I think I, I think I've, I've oh, no! the final answer oh, though. <laughs> No, I, I think I have our, we have our final answer, though, of, of how far we think he got. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the, the average human average human walking speed is around three to four miles an hour. So if we half that as someone who has the high end, because he's probably physically fit, but half it because of terrain, unfamiliar location. If you said it was kind of chill, there was kind of a chill. So that made mm -hmm. me think it was either fall or spring. So springtime in New York, uh, there's about 13 hours of daylight. So if he walked 10 of the 13 hours, uh, we think he maybe could have gotten about 20 miles. <laughs> Okay, and and you explain. I love this. Oh my god, you, you're explaining all this to Sasabe's, uh, and she's kind of like trying to crunch it with her knowledge of the local trails. I don't know if that makes um, sense. You know, to kind of kind of aim for about like that spot. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and you 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 start making your way as quickly as you can through the jungle. Uh, she she thinks she knows a little bit of a shortcut, and uh, you follow her um, back on the beach. Cadrax, <laughs> it is your turn. I'd like to get up near 
the Viking with the axe and moreover the audacity to strike toward my friend. And I would like to blast him and any nearby associates of his, uh, including perhaps the one who missed me, uh, in an, uh, with, a, with an aim of knockback. Okay, so I want to create space from my friend. No touch. Give me a blast roll. Blast in the past is, let's see, 11, 14. Um, 14. Uh, okay, yeah, that'll do it. You kind of hit them back and both of them kind of go flying back a few feet. And I'm going to say you knock them both off their feet, like into the sand. Um, the other two Vikings that Vion was sort of emotion controlling are just kind of standing there looking, you know, like a little stoned or something. Hell yeah, bro. Uh, they're very kind of blissed out. Um, uh, but these two are kind of like knocked back and kind of fall like straight on their butt. Uh, and, uh, Kentu kind of, um, looks around and he's like, we need something to tie them with. Are we out of initiative order? Uh, uh, Kentu was next after Kadra. Uh, oh, okay, but we're still technically fighting the standing or the the just recently knocked back Vikings. Uh, I mean, yeah, they're they're not on okay. but they are. You know, you have you have, you have blasted them right. off their feet at least. I have typically been credited as the one with uh, the grappling hook from our mysterious benefactor. Mm -hmm. Grappling hook. A uh, grappling hook, if uh, we just unhooked the spring of it, could act as a rope. That's Ooh. true. I can also cast binding on all Ooh. of them, since like the two are also knocked down. Good. I mean, them. they'll all be in multiple locations, so having as much as possible, plus he is a speedy uh, flyer. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, why don't I, I'll just cast binding. Okay, We're, we'll probably need a grappling hook again. Sometime very big soon. magic, little magic. Uh, big. Is this four of them? I have to do big magic because the the burst is dependent upon the ma magic level. Oh, good call. So okay. it'll drop the bliss. That, okay, so you. Yeah, it'll turn off the emotion. Yeah. Control. Well, if this works, hopefully that won't be a problem. Uh, yeah, good point. <laughs> um, okay, give me a big magic roll. What level are you going for? I'll go six just to make it easy. Well, we're only doing four of them, right? So uh, I'm, I'll cast it at level four. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's pumpkin plus eight, uh, 14 to turn on. Yeah. Rolls high easily, to turn on. Uh, Great. <laughs> easily, you've got binding on. Um, and, what kind of binding material are you making? Um, this is uh, going to be. You know what? Just to get them um, uh, a little confused and, and, and rattled in a bit. Uh, in a way, I'm going to. Oh, interesting. You know what? I'm going to cast ropes of hard light that i witness on ulez's planet uh like within that library spire that we saw but i want to add a detail which is um swirls of runes that are going around if they were to look at them so there's recognizable magic to the vikings Ooh. um okay so the way binding works um your binding has a material level equal to its power level in this case four mm -hmm. uh, you make a coordination test against the target's coordination um let's just say you're doing it as a burst right yes so give me a coordination roll okay come on what are you oh thank god pumpkin again that's the best i can do so nine okay i'm gonna you know minion combat rolls i'm just making one roll for all four of them uh they you rolled a nine they rolled um okay they rolled an eight it's a marginal success you have achieved a partial hold um, the material of the binding is halved. So it's like you have them held at like a level two. two um, and uh, it is a partial hold. So like, they're kind of like caught a little bit. Sure. Um, and uh, that brings up the Vikings. They're bound. So they, we are now out of initiative order. Um, you kind of look down uh, towards the beach um, while you have been fighting these four, the others have just been 
super violently busy uh. and uh, you can see bodies just sort of floating in the water like you know being dragged up against the shore by the tide um a couple of them still kind of like clawing at each other like running out of energy as they're just manically fighting kentu kind of zips down there and he kind of tries pulling a bunch of them apart but it it does not really seem you know it does not really seem to be a, wor a worthwhile cause at this point. Most of them seem to be either dead or so injured that they are down anyway. Getting there. Um, yeah. Yes, dead or getting there. Um, so... I am a surgeon. Kadrex. This is a plain triage situation. Respectfully, Vion, we will get to your arm most assuredly, but this is triage. Oh, don't worry about it. I can cast healing on myself or something, I'm sure. Kadrex, you zip down uh, to the shore. Um, and uh, Vion, you're, you want to cast healing? No, I do, but I can also cast that with burst. Uh, although I've got my... Yeah, this would be small. I can only treat three people. Uh, but yeah, I want to heal them if I can. All right. I mean, these uh, were the, to remind, like, it's bad what they're doing, but these folks were locking away this thing in general. So while I don't agree with where they were doing this, this isn't their turn. They're not trying to spread this violence consciously. Uh, it was my heavy handedness that actually unlocked this whole thing. So it's my fault. And out of that guilt, I would like to do what I can. Big magic, little magic. Uh, it has to be little magic. Big magic is being used to bind right now. Yeah. Okay. Good call. Give me little magic roll. Great. Going for three. Uh, to turn on, that's going to be eight plus five, which is 13 to turn on. Okay. Healing is on. Great. Uh, healing at three. Uh, and it's six. Okay. Cadrax, you head down to the beach um, and start assessing everything. You walk right to the water or the shore and you can see, you know, as. as the sun is beginning to set, but it is still light enough for you to see that just the waters along the shore of the river have turned blood red um, with all of the bodies that are floating there. Um, give me first an investigation roll. I will add my surgery. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're looking around to see like who you can help. Right. This is first stage of triage is figuring out the relative severity of uh, everyone's injuries whom you can uh, save and starting from the most severe within that category. So that is a 12. Okay. Um, you start looking around and you can see Vion kind of trying to heal in bursts, you know, you focus in on some of the more severe cases that you think you can do something about. Um, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna ask you to make one medical roll that you know is going to account for all the work you do here on this beach. Um, you can add in, you know, any of your medical bonuses. And uh, do you have the medical kit? Yes, uh, we have said in our time jumping uh, previously that I have the medical kit on me. So you can add, you can use that too. Um. Okay, okay, not a bad die, not a bad die. Uh, let's see, thirteen. Okay, you get to work. Um, there are all kinds of severed limbs, you know, super deep lacerations. You know, I mean, just. Viking combat, uh, people with cracked skulls, broken bones, it's its pretty bad. You are using what, whatever you've got in the medical kit, and Kentu is sort of flying back and forth to the forest to try and find, you know, healing herbs or things that you can use to bind limbs with, and just generally acting as your assistant here. Um, he is a That is what you are all doing. Um, Benny and Ulez. Oh my God, I think we have opened up our lore drop. Thank hey. you so much, everybody. Oh, I'm excited. Oh. 
Um, I mean, I'm always excited about that, but I'm especially excited about this one. Thank you so much, everybody. We so super appreciate all the support that you have shown us. Um, and uh, if people are still experiencing uh, audio problems, um, sorry about that. Uh, we, we were having trouble sorting that out. So, um, Benny, Ulez, while all of this was going on, you were tracking northeast with Sisapes. Um, uh, and I'm going to say it is just about starting to get dark. And Ulez, the light from your, you know, your hair, uh, your cables are kind of illuminating the forest a little bit. And Sisapes, as she walks, kind of can make her eyes kind of like crackle and glow that kind of can shed some light Ooh. on some things. I'll fire hands. We'll get, why not? Full, full spread. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. Lights. I love this. This is, this is the search party you want to be with. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, we can travel at night. <laughs> you make it, you know, you said about 20 miles. You think about this person would have gone and Sasapi is using a shortcut is sort of able to get you, you know, roughly, you know, in, in that direction uh, and find a trail that sort of, she says, leads off from the beach where the Viking ships docked. Um, and, uh, and and you stop to look around. Ulez, give me an investigation roll. I mean, Benny, you can too, but... With honor. Da, 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 da. Six. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thirteen. <laughs> Ulez, you... You know, you have been paying a lot of attention to what the undisturbed forest looks like and you start to pick out some little signs of branches that have been brushed aside scuff marks in the dirt maybe that looks like a person or an animal ran by um and you start seeing things like that and start getting the feeling that you might be on the right track here Okay. Well, we are traveling in the right direction. These side paths are brilliant. You really do know your way around a forest. Well, I grew up here. <laughs> and uh, she says, well, if he's near here, he probably want water. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to go all the time without some rest. Well, this far east, there are only so many places to get fresh water this far inland. Uh, let, I can take you. Come yeah, on. Let's go. And um, uh, while we're walking, uh, I kind of probably like, so how long have you been able to do your, and she kind of like her hands are on fire, uh, your your thing. And, and she's like, wow, it's so cool. Um, I, since, uh, you know, since, since I was little. That's cool. Me too. And, and can... Are, are are you are you good at controlling yours? Um, I mean, I'm better at it, but sometimes it's still hard. Well, Kentu says when when I learn how to control it, I'm going to be able to be a fierce warrior and defend the village. And when she says that, like, 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 I think you already are a fierce warrior. Around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, our our warrior told you that you were a fierce warrior. You were the little warrior, so I think that that means you're already already there. And look at you, you're here defending defending your home. So I think that counts. Just doing my part. Very good. Very good at it. And you walk for a little while longer. And eventually you come to kind of a brook. Um, surrounded by trees. It is dark out. Again, the only light of the moon and what you all are generating yourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is very quiet here. You know, you can hear the crickets. You can hear the sounds of, you know, the wind blowing through the trees. Um, and Sasape says, uh, this is the only place to get fresh water this far inland here. You have to go much further if you wanted to find something else to drink. Yeah, let's see if we can find any signs of someone... Liking like having come through here. Mm -hmm. Give me investigation rolls. Yeah, I will. 
Rick, thanks for asking. <laughs> oh, man, that's Max. It's nine. Hey. That's the best I can do. <laughs> Fourteen. Okay. Um, Benny, you're kind of like looking around. I'm it's very dark so out. Hard. Yeah. I'm. I just. I'm doing so good at looking. <laughs> Absorbing, not so much. Looking, Ulez, top notch. Sisape is sort of following you around, having picked up that like you are the tracker here, um, and uh, she's kind of following close behind you. And you, you know, let's say you figure that if this person got water, they had to go to the water's edge. So you start kind of like circling the brook, mm -hmm. just kind of. While looking very carefully at the ground, hmm. and um, you eventually come to a spot where there is clearly a footprint and like an indentation. It almost looks like somebody kind of stopped and knelt by the side of the water. Oh, look at this! And you sort of turn. This is the footprint where the person knelt. They would have had to turn around. And you look at the ground and you can sort of see, you sort of see like a trail in the ground. It looks like somebody maybe kind of dragged something along the ground to try and cover up footsteps or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. like, like use like a leaf to kind of, you know, but it's it's pretty obvious that, you know, the ground is like disturbed. Mm -hmm. Is it is um, it like because the ground was wet because we're near a body of water and they're like imprints or is it like in dry ground, like in dust? Um, it, it starts off kind of wet, like close to the brook, mm -hmm. but the further you walk in, it gets kind of drier and dustier. So like near the brook, it kind of looks like you can see like, you know, scrape marks in the sort of wet dirt where somebody was like, you know, brushing something around yeah. and then it gets much fainter on the dust, but because you've got your light, you know, you can still sort of find that trail. Okay. So my question then is going from where it gets wet to dry if any mud tracked on the footprints into the dry bit, it would still be wet if he had been here recently. If it's dry, he's been gone for a while. Is that discernible? Um, give me an investigation oh, roll. I don't want to do it. I'm Benny saying it out loud. Ulez, please help me. Okay, Ulez, you can also. If Benny's saying oh, that out loud. Yes, that is brilliant. Whoops. Let's it's find out. It's, it's an eight. It's good for me. Uh, I'm thinking big, big thoughts. One on the dice. Um, <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. <It's> still dead. <laughs> um, you know what? After Benny, Benny brings it up, you know, you you kind of look very closely, and you can see indications of the sort of darker, damper dirt. No. Not not a ton, and the wind has been mm. blowing, so some of it might have dried. But like you, you catch just enough of it, so that it leads, let's say, um, to the south. So if it's still slightly darker, then the chances is that he was here recently are uh -huh. much are higher. Yeah, is that what I'm getting out of that? Because if it's still wet, makes sense. That is a reasonable assumption, I would think. Okay, we must travel quickly. They are close. Um, can I, um, I would like to spend a point of determination to retcon, uh, something. When Ulaz was in the village and they had that conversation, um, with my basket weavy, weaving homie. Anate. Anate, thank you. I didn't write her name down. Um, I would like her to have given me a um a paring knife i don't know if that's the right word like a knife uh, that i a can small like... small handheld that you'd yeah just little yeah okay uh, um is that you, cool? you have yeah you know it'd, it'd probably be like a flint knife or something uh, or, i don't know, you what know that means, like, so obviously down. i mean like a, you know something like sharpened rock like 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 a, like an arrowhead or something like that right because it's like we're so far back it's like they're not gonna you're not gonna have a polished metal knife or anything um but uh, something to that effect. Was so done uh, in this area. I don't even know that. If is that a thing that was done here? I I, I don't know. I don't. That's something that I've looked so much into. I don't know the answer to that. Right? Yeah. I don't. I don't think 
there was, you know, a tremendous amount of that, but I, I got to admit, I did not specifically look that up. Um, I know, you know, the Vikings would have had, you know, some sort of. They work primarily with point. pure iron in this period. Yeah. Uh, there is obviously indigenous uh, metallurgy at a fairly high level that we could infer uh, from, for instance, goldsmithing. Right. Uh, was very prominent. Um, I think they had some form of alloying, but uh, in this century, in this location, I'm not as sure. Yeah, I, I don't know, you know, tribe by tribe and area by area, you know, quite what would have been, you know, I mean, our, our tribe in our area is fictitious. So, you know, but, uh, I, I, you know, I don't, I'm trying to keep it as but close I don't to know reality that we did as possible. Iron Age. Yeah. Uh, metallurgy um, in pre-Columbian America is extraction, purification, and alloying of metals and metal crafting by indigenous peoples of the America prior to the European contact in the late 15th century. They've been using native metals from ancient times with recent finds of gold artifacts dated way way back and copper so they were they were doing metallurgy how about yeah. a roughly hewn but not iron smelling not yeah yeah roughly sure mm -hmm. well say so you've got a not you know you, you you've got a knife it is it is not you know it, it is not you it's know, not pretty but steel, i love it but, right mm -hmm. yeah um so you spend a point of determination you have that what do you want to do with it I would like to strip down the bark of a tree and use my gadgets to create a tool that can bind. Ah, okay. Um, Ulez, give me a gadgets roll. Okay. I'm also prepared to spend another point of determination because of my, well, actually, I'll, I'll, well, how, how does this work? Um, you know what? I have Benny. I don't need to spend that point of determination. Never mind. Uh, I need solar energy. I think, Benny, you work, like, solar energy? Okay. Yeah? Yeah, we'll find out. Rick, Rick thoughts? Rulings? GM rulings? It's night. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Solar energy? Benny's I need gonna a go hot Benny's gonna go light. magma. Oh, I see Benny's what you're saying. Go magma. Sorry, because of my, I can't, my limit on my gadgets. Um can only be yeah, charged, fully mean, fabricated with the help yeah okay of if light. if Benny yeah if, as, as, magma as form. As, okay Benny you are you are in magna form that can serve as your um because I need a full page your power source right um so you are doing what you're making like yes. finding power okay give me uh what do you have to roll for guidance? I've put so many points into it. Do you think I've rolled it enough? No. <laughs> Intellect <laughs> test, including any appropriate specialty. Okay, so give me um, give me a gadget roll, and uh, do any of your specialties apply here? Um, robotics, electronics, mechanics. Me mechanics yeah. might apply. Um, okay, so you can you can add that on. Awesome. Then he goes lava, and she's got those those white silvery swirls <laughs> swirls through it with the kind of light teeny tiny wisps of other colors in there love that 13 13 um okay um you get to work on building that meanwhile back at the beach um you all are catching up the last of the vikings that you think are probably patch upable um and uh, it's dark. Kentu is sort of standing on the beach, and he's just looking out towards the three ships that are docked out at the water. And he says, look. And the... The two of you look out there. Um, give me uh, investigation rolls. Ten. That's a, a pumpkin. Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen, Sam, you said what? Ten. Ten. So even with just the moonlight reflecting off the water, you can see cloud-like shape shoot from one ship to the next. Kentu says, I think their monster is on the boat. I think you're right. I 
I understand your first obligation is to your own people. I will understand if you need to protect them. Uh, I'm going to go talk to it. Yes, I will as well. Okay. And Kentus, I'm going with you. Vion, is it possible to protect us from the worst of its excesses? Should it should they choose to turn upon us? Um, I mean, I can cast nullification, I suppose. Uh, I can cast emotion control. I would consent to this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Kentu says, do whatever you have to do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to cast um, emotion control uh, on us. Um, oops. Sorry. Uh, give me a... Give me, give me a. Uh, is motion control on right now? It still is, right? Uh, it got no, you, you turned it off to for the yeah, binding. Yeah, binding. Okay, so give me a, a big magic, little magic. Uh, this will be big magic. Um, what level are you going for? Uh, six. All right, give me um a big magic roll. All right, this is eight to turn on. So it's eleven to turn on. Eight plus roll to turn on. I got a three. So that's 11 to All right. activate you it. Just get that on. Um, emotion control comes on. Been that kind um, of day. All right. Sorry. My math brain just totally froze up there for a second as I was like staring at my die being like Same. six plus. But, okay. Um, yeah. Also, just so um, this is not uh, to anyone watching. I apologize. This is totally behind the scenes in, in, inside baseball stuff. Um, if anyone sends me messages, I can't respond because my keyboard uh, or my I have to choose between my keyboard and my mouse. So I'm not ignoring you. Right. Thank you for the reminder, but also thank you for letting us uh, know about the receipts. I thereby understand that we can strike <laughs> oh, no. without fear of response. Oh, I've done this Continue. to myself. Uh, <laughs> so now I am, uh, I'm casting to turn it on, right, Rick? Or, or casting it onto us. Um, how does yeah. This, how does this work with, um, with, uh, initially consenting parties? Emotion control. Uh, I, I guess if the party is consenting, does it, does it even have a condition for that? Um, I think it would probably come into play when our emotions are being controlled by oh, others. To, yes. The the like role you make or whatever yeah. would be yeah, a stand in. So it's like uh, defensive either now and then it holds or like so because I have it, I buy that. attacking right. that. Like it's I'll have to roll against like yeah your emotions. Yeah, I think yeah. you roll our emotion control if we are uh, at such peril. Okay. And something about this spell, like plus this spell's level. Yeah. Okay, so the three of you fly out towards the ship you just saw the smoky form land on. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to phase. Well, uh, you're phasing everybody or just you? Just, uh, just me strategically because I'm trying to think of who can hurt whom if we're all activated and stuff, so. Uh, gotcha. I'll just, Kentu, just, just can maybe go. You Kentu fly with too? Kentu uh, if Kentu would be willing. Then the two of you could phase without fear of phasing me. I would be okay, I'll phase Kentu. Uh, but if Kentu starts uh, kicking my butt, Kentu's going to win. <laughs> just so we're clear. That's true. Uh, Thank you. You you phase Kentu and he sort of sees. He's like, cool. That's pretty rad. Huh. Thought thought what I could do was cool. Oh, uh, it is. You're very fast. Yeah, but this is kind of amazing. <laughs> um, Thanks, and man. you swoop out over the water, and while you're headed there, Ulez, you are just about finishing up with your device. Um, what do you want to do? Um, first, it's very important that I detail what it looks like. Um, it looks like a slinky. But made out of bark, maybe adorned a little bit with like some grass in between, like the the wrappy bits. But the goal of it is you're gonna throw it at your enemy, one time use, and it's gonna bind. Hopefully, their arms, maybe their legs, and we'll find out. I love it. 
Thank um, you. So yeah, you were you were finished making this thing. You can see that this trail uh, heads off to the south. I think I said. Um, what do you want to do? Oh, we're following. Okay, we're give me hot an investigation on the trail. Roll. Yeah. Get a, we're roll two. It's a, I got another eight. Patience, oh, yeah. uh, Twelve over here. And and you both kind of are able to pick up the trail at this point. Yes. Benny Ulez has pointed it out to you, and now that you know what you're looking for, um, you are able to kind of follow it. And the two, the three of you, um, just break down this trail uh, a couple of hundred yards, and um, it, the the trail seems to get a little deeper, a little more easily noticeable, as if whoever you know you are following, um, uh, uh, you know, kind of got. You know, as they got further from the site, sort of stopped doing such a good job covering their tracks. And uh, then you stop. Ulez, you hear like what sounds maybe like uh, crunching branches or something. In uh, what direction? Uh, we'll say just off uh, to your west. Everybody, we have to be quiet. We believe they are very close. Do you hear that? I'm going to douse flames. And you go dark, and Sasape's watching you also, like, turns off her electric. And um, you you sort of listen, and you also hear, like, crunch, crunch, crunch. Does it seem like it's getting closer to us or further away? Yeah, it sounds like somebody is trying to approach you stealthily. Oh, oh well, good job. Okay, well. Uh, okay, hold on. <laughs> Can I tell what direction it's coming from? Yeah, from the west. Okay, so I want to just face that direction and like, I'm looking around, like, I just want to lava on. <laughs> okay. You lava on as you do it, like you hear, you know, Rah! and like from oh, okay. over, you know, these kind of like shrubs and bushes just to your west. This Viking guy with this like giant sword comes like flying towards you, and like as he like kind of leaps in the air, it's like slow motion. You can see it all on his face as he comes like leaping out and then sees like you know you this lava person and like just like kind of you know he just freaks out. You if, he, know, if he's gonna it, whiff it, can I try to catch his sword? Uh, give me a coordination roll. Okay. Is this okay? Uh, this is an uh, maybe. This is a stretch since I'm I am lava on, and this is an attribute roll. Can I use my power specialty? Um, eh, you're not using. You know, yeah, I'm not really. I guess it would, it, not really. No, that's right. I'm, it's not. It's enabling me to be able to attempt to catch a sword without hurting myself. <laughs> Oh, that's max die. That's 10. 10. Um, what is his strength? Okay. Uh, as he flies by, like, he kind of completely loses, you know, his, his discipline and form, you know, of his attack. And he just goes hurtling past you as you grab the sword right out of his hand. By the blade. Like, just, like, okay. All right. Face first in the dirt. Okay. Uh, um, get up. And, Come on. We got to talk. And, and it's a, what, what are you? Vulcan and then he looks over and he looks, oh my god, what are you? Yeah, just from space and from the depths of the earth, and we've come to you have stolen. And we are we... here for retribution. Yeah. 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 Give me a willpower <laughs> roll, both of you. Yeah, yeah buddy. <laughs> <laughs> But he's so tired of all these guys. This I'm sorry, but from God, space that's... and from the depths of the earth is the most badass thing I've ever heard in my entire right? life. <laughs> I'm not even just pairs it so that. nicely with retribution. <laughs> Rick, is this one? Can I use my power specialty? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a 13. Nice. Thir I Let's... got a nine. Okay. Um, the I'm Viking. Okay, what? What do you want from me? Um. Uh. We would like your stories, and the thing that you stole. Um. Stories. Yes. About the thing that you stole. 
Yeah. As payment to make up for the fact that you have committed a crime. Karsten said it's a weapon. Said it's bear can can hurt the thing, that monster. What do you know of the monster? Huh, could you tell us? We could sit and talk. Huh. Yeah, I'll pop. I'll literally like. Is he still on the ground? Like I'll sit. I'll just like cross leg down with him. Yeah, the campfire is joining the campfire stories. I would like. <laughs> I know only that it killed a great many people and that we were supposed to bury it as far away as we possibly could. I've been told that it didn't come from where you come from. Do you know? Wh I know not where it's from. Mm. Does it have a name? Not that I have heard. Why is it angry? I did not speak to it. None of us have. Has anybody tried? I don't know. And I'm not taking that chance myself. If even half of what I've been told about it is true. It is just death. Has it always been death? As far as I know. I said I, I know very little of it. Only, only that whoever gave it to us said... Many had fallen. Hundreds, perhaps thousands. Perhaps more. And you ran, you ran with what you stole on accident? Did you forget you had it, or did you take it on purpose? I took it on purpose. What, to mess Why? it all up? What, yeah, what, what was the purpose? To protect myself against that thing. Okay. To the detriment to everybody's death, that does not make any sense. What were you thinking? that I don't want to die. Uh, if they did their jobs and buried the sarcophagus, it would not be a problem. If the monster escaped, they are not worth saving. Oh. Well, that's well, that's messed up. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody's worth saving. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to need you to give that to my friend here, and I'm going to uh, point to um, uh, Sisope. Your friend is a child. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stronger than you and braver. Once again, we've got depths of the earth from the sky of the land. This is her home place. We've got, you know, the three, the trilogy. I guess things come in threes. Ooh, Betty's like, I don't know, making this up. Very like, <laughs> good. And uh, we're here to retrieve what you stole. Mm -hmm. Beware. So, yeah. He 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 reaches to his, his like a little you know leather pouch on his belt, and he kind of pulls out. Uh, basically what the old Viking described. It is a kind of ball of what looks like maybe unpolished iron. No decorations, nothing on it. It's just kind of a, a sphere. Um, and uh, here. Truly, you will give this to us with no fight? Yes, and then I'm getting as far away from this place as I possibly can. And he oh. looks to the south. Fair. Don't come back, probably, I would suggest. Okay. Um, and, like, Ulez does not even give them a farewell. Uh, Benny, Benny, I'm gonna, like, as she kind of gets up and, like, she's lava, so she doesn't, like, she doesn't have, like, pants to wipe off, but she, like, goes through the motions of, like, dusting off um, her, like, jeans. Um, and as she turns, she's gonna uh, stomp kind of at him. And I, I want to try to like scare him. I want to like get into his face, uh, and I, and she's gonna kind of like point at him. Take this with you. Be kind always. Got it. Give me a willpower roll. Yes. I have to. Here we go. I love that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if I'm being spooky with my lava, can I add my lava? <laughs> yes my attributes yes. yeah yeah okay that is a uh, it's 13 and he he kind like of like crouching in his space like over him he, he he you know he gets a kind of like a guilty look on his face kind of just like looks down you know at his feet and from here on yeah 
What you've done in the past okay. has passed. Do better in the future, okay? And he, and he starts backing away I'll, towards I'll the south. I'll stand up and out of his face. many times. Have a good one. And she'll turn on heel and start back following her Yeah, friends. he runs and disappears into the forest. Um, you have the orb. Very good. Um, so cryptic, and I'm going to lava off. So <laughs> that's very cryptic, but your touch at the very end, that was very inspirational. We had given up all hope on that human. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You looked guilty? I don't know. Yes. Oh, Sisipe, uh, should we return? Sisipe. Sisipe. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, we got to get this to that old man. I'm still unsure if we want to give that to, to him or if we just want to deal with this because he was. You hold on to it, okay? Until someone says otherwise, I want you to. You're gonna. You're gonna be our warrior with 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 the weapon, okay? You can trust me. Okay, yes. I know I can. You're very good at this, so don't don't give it to anyone. It's yours for now, okay? And meanwhile, back on the beach, um, you are arriving at the ship, one of the three ships, the one you saw the smoky form enter, and you land on the deck. What do you want to do? Uh, the mist is, like, in front of us? Um... So you don't quite see it at this point. You see a hatch that maybe leads to a hold below. Um, there might be like a cabin or something like that. Sailors have to sleep somewhere. Um, it's wood, right? It is. Do you mind if we uh, fit yeah. on down, Doc? Please. Uh, yeah. And we'll just both phase down together. Anybody else hear that? Are we getting um, some, I don't know if someone's mic picking up something, or if something is, sh someone's mic is shaking? Beware <laughs> the moon. Um, man, all, all, all the audio problems tonight. Sorry, folks. Um, so, I'm sorry, you said you're gonna, you're gonna phase right down into the hold? Yeah. All right, you and Kentu uh, phase down into the hold, and in front of you, as you come down, you see this smoky person, the red mist, um, and it seems to be searching through the hold, looking for something, and then it stops... And it turns towards you and just looks at you. Hi there. Hello. Uh, you looking for something? You need help? And it just sort of stares at you. You have great power. Uh, yeah. But uh, well, upstairs is really the powerhouse. I'm kind of the mouth of the operation. And he sort of floats like a little closer towards you. If you come to try and kill me. No, it's not really my modus operandi. Uh mostly come to figure out exactly what you're doing, how you're doing it, and who you are. And do you have the orb? No. I have come here with no weapons of my own, strictly of our volition to speak with you. I have no use for you. 
and he shoots his hand towards you and it like sort of shoots into this like smoky pillar that hits you in your phased form and drives you through the side of the ship and lands you in the water. Okay, you know what? Actually, uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. And uh, Kentu zips right out the hole right behind you. To, I, I think it's following us. And uh, what do we do here? Kadrax, you hear Vion land in the water and see Kentu and hear him yelling. Uh, I would love to retrieve Vion, but of course I cannot. <sighs> Your boy is phased. And uh, yeah, the boy is not phased. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. And Kentu zips down. He's like, I got you, buddy. And he like grabs your arm, like pulls you up out of the water. You okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, and are we being followed by the the mist? You don't see it yet. Can you take us back in there? We want to go back in there. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Let's do this. All right, let's go, pal. And he flies you back into the hold, and you don't see anything in there. Cadrax, up on deck, you see him form right in front of you. And he looks at you as, you also have great power. As do you, that you will one day wield to great end, Spirit of the Berserker. He kind of cocks his head and like starts looking you up and down studying you. The day will come that we are allies. I don't know whether or not we will reach that on this day. But to that end it tells me that there is more than victory or defeat or usefulness from each other. And to that end on this rare opportunity. I would learn. Give me a willpower roll. Absolutely. I mean, lies? Don't give me a haze. Okay. Okay. Not bad for, not bad for Cadrax. Uh, nine. That is one below max. Do you have the orb? Can we cut? Can we say that at this point you get a bright message where we alert them that we're on our way back <laughs> sure if you oh, want yes, we have the we have oh oh, oh the ear piece. Yeah. Yeah. The ear yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll just chat to you yep. not anything yeah like we have it and we're on our way back, back. Cool. the orb has been described to me as a weapon against you but that doesn't tell me what it is to you I have no use for you. And he shoots his tendril straight at you. Um, you try to block Is it eligible it. for reflection? It is not. It doesn't reflect, and it, your aura has no effect. It goes right through your aura and just hits you right off the side of the boat. Um, okay. It is up to you whether you land in the water or, you know, catch yourself in flight. But, you know, you got hit. Um, the damage you take is negligible. It does not seem to have been trying to hurt you, just kind of make a statement. And he says, um, he looks down at, you know, the three of you and says, I have no use for any of you. So you don't want to know where it is? And he stops. Where's the orb? Tell me why you want to know. If you won't tell me, perhaps that old man will. He doesn't know. He zips know. into smoke form and shoots. All right, this through the forest, Doc. This dude is the absolute worst. <laughs> In every time period, we deal with this the absolute worst. But that changes. Why? 
Yeah, la- okay, correct me if I'm wrong. The last time we interacted with this individual or this entity in general, they didn't talk like this. They didn't act like this. They came out of that truck and they said, we're on the same side. You're welcome. And have helped us on multiple occasions. And uh, I'd, I'd like to start flying after in the direction of the clearing. Uh, uh, flying. You follow. I don't have a good talking word for Okay. Like, um, Kentu is like, should we follow them? That yeah. would be great. Tell Sasapes. Uh, and we. You uh, have incoming. Oh, the mist just seeks teleported. the orb. Uh, they are heading toward Torsten. And there's a crackle of green light as we appear in front of Torsten. Well, nope, you gotta give me a teleporting roll. Dang it! Your uh oh die. Dang it, I roll in this game? Uh uh oh's okay. That's gonna be a nine teleport. And bam, crackle of green light, and you appear right in front of Torsten, and he kind of was a little startled. Did you find it? Yes. Uh, what do you do with it? How does it work? It makes him vulnerable. You have to... And, and, and he stops as you see the red mist pour into the clearing. I would like to lava form. You lava form up. Sasape cr- crackles with electricity. Um... Right behind the red mist comes Kentu, Vion, and Kadrax, who land. You are all kind of circling it now. We got the orb? Sasape. Sasape, Sasape has it. Okay. Um, I would like to stay kind of like half in front. Like she could, she is her little, little warrior. She's powerful on her mm-hmm. own, but I want to stay nearby. Just because I I don't want this kid to get like hurt, <laughs> if I can help it. Um. Does the mist go straight for Torsten? It stands for a moment mm-hmm. and just kind of slowly turns its head around, looking at all of you. Hi. Um, we agree. Okay. You. So it looks behind it at Vian and Kentu, and shoots a tendril straight in your direction. Vion, make it, give me a coordination roll. Okay. Um, let's see. This is going to be roll plus... Ugh, it's not much. Uh, this is... The dice are telling the story here tonight. Four. You get hit and you go flying into these, these trees right mm-hmm. behind you. Um, and you, you kind of hit the tree... Um, I'm gonna say you take negligible damage, like two points. We're phased, we're phased um, currently, so we would just you go like, through. Oh, one. you're yeah. phased. So just, like, um, like, you go through the wood, yeah. so you don't take damage, but you are pushed back. Um, Kentu lets go of you and re corporealizes. Um, you reach up and rub, you know, your neck, you know, um, as. You were sort of jostled by this. I got hit. Um, And you realize you don't have the crystal. Kenty, you got to get us right back there right now. Um, He says, we have to take care of this first. And the red mist whirls around and it shoots a tendril in the direction of Torsten. Benny, hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. Benny's just going to start trying to talk to it. And are, are you interposed or? I'm not in front of Torsten. Okay. But I am in, I'm like in the vicinity and I want to try, I want to, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can get it to talk to me. And it just couldn't care less. Ah, it's Torsten and Torsten. And smashes mm. into a tree behind it, and he is knocked out instantly. That's great. 
Okay. And and Sasape pulls the orb out and says, you know, uh, it's like, what do we do with this? And when the red mist sees the orb, it shoots a tendril in the interpose. direction of Sasape. Interpose. 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 Interpose <laughs> that time. Okay. Benny, um, Give me. Uh, I can look up the interpose rules. Sorry, I, I, I should think only it's have it. It, You basically strength? get to substitute your prowess. reaction. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't have to an strength or prowess it. Presumably. You become the target of the attack and may defend against its reaction. Okay. Oh, so actually, you could use any defense, including coordination. Yeah. Should be, I suppose, a yoink out of the way kind of uh, interpose. Yeah. Uh, what are you going so, for? Uh, prowess, but um, but the attacker has a plus two to effort on the attack to test against you. So it just because I'm interposing, it has an advantage. I, <laughs> I know I always forget too because I always pull it up. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you for telling me. I would not have known that. Yeah, we. I mean, we don't do it super often. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, is this one that I can use my because uh, I made a fire? What is it you're trying to do? Just like take the hit or like snatch the side of like, the way? I think, I think probably well, I'm made of lava, so I don't want to touch her. But like, if I can like try to like block it in any way or like like a, a defensive like if I can do like a when, when when you get punched, there's ways to like get it to roll off of you. So if I can get in front of her and try to like get like my shoulder and arm in the way and see if I can get it to glance up and off, so like a basically like a kickboxing defensive pose. If I can get in front of her and get it to like glance off of me, that's the okay. Give me that, yeah. that just sounds like a kind of a fight move. Yeah. So it's like I'm just gonna just say no, prowess. You know, prowess, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then so I'm asking since I'm I'm lava, can I use my uh, specialty? Oh, um, that's what I was asking. <laughs> I figured it would be prowess yeah. a fighting move. Yeah. Okay. 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 So that is going to be that's only thirteen. Um. Okay. The. Smoky Tendril shoots right towards you, and um, you block it, but the, just you've never felt anything like this. Overwhelmingly powerful. Your damage absorption does not do anything. <gasps> um, you take six damage, and you kind of rock back. Sasapes did not get hit by the Tendril, but you kind of hit her no. hand. Oh, and she kind of kind of and she throws the orb as as you as you as you kind of burned her hand a little bit and the orb goes and rolls into the middle of the clearing. Sorry, have we slept at any point over the past seven um You did. You slept uh at um uh, uh Crescent Bay. Did that's right. Okay, mm, thank God. Because yeah. mm, that would have um, been funky. I would like yeah. to teleport um, to grab that. I don't. Do we have like an initiative order? We're just kind of popping off. Um, no, we 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 were just kind of popping off there, um, and uh, it, it was just sort of like um, I'm going to say to keep this moving. Um, the the orb rolls into the middle of the clearing, and Kentu swoops at it and picks it up off the ground. And he charges the monster, just mm -hmm. flies straight at it. And the monster kind of now seems a little concerned. And Kentu just flies to it with the orb in his hand and he punches at it. And the monster shrieks and falls back. And Kentu punches it again and it shrieks. And he punches it again and you hear the monster shrieking. And you can see... Torsten is starting to wake up and, and, and he yells, push it towards the sarcophagus! And Kentu punches it again and the shrieking is loud and overwhelming. And Vion, at that moment, you feel something pinch your arm. And you kind of look. Yeah. And there's nothing there. You don't see anything. And Benny, you also feel like a pinch on your back. And kind of feel there's Ulez, you feel it on your leg. Cadrax, you feel it on your neck. Little pinches kind of all over. And then something weird happens. 
you're overcome as you feel these little pinches like all over your bodies, all of you, arms, legs, toes, but none of you see anything. There are so many little pinches so fast, eventually it just starts to feel like this generalized pain kind of everywhere around you. Can I fire closest kept? Uh, yeah. Try to trouble against myself? Fire. Um, I think she bursts a little bit, I think. Your fire bursts. And it's not used to being touched in lava form. <laughs> yeah, and, and and this is, it keeps getting intenser and intenser until it's almost overbearing. And suddenly the four of you are surrounded by a white light. And it goes brighter and brighter and brighter until all around you, all you can see is this blazing white void. And then, bam. You find yourself standing in the laboratory at Quantity Me Mechanics. What? Molly Darnell, uh, played by Natalie Emanuel, comes running out of a nearby room and goes, It worked! It worked! It worked! It worked! Uh, and Terrence Darnell, played by Orlando Jones, exits the room. I don't believe it. What? What, what, what worked? It's a And Molly says, I've been working on getting you back ever since I took those readings when you were time traveling in dc no. last november no no uh but i wasn't sure this was gonna work but i had to try we have to go back she didn't need you wait what no you look and she pulls open the blinds oh. and all you see you see the skyline filled with giant spaceships what they're round they're giant pods made from bits of jagged rock cadrax you immediately know what you are looking at. It's the Alpha Combine. They've arrived. And you know what? We're going to pick up right there for the finale of Power Play next week. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, oh, heck. Our, heck. Our friends. We had to leave them behind. Heck. I've been waiting to get this one on the record forever. Uh, um, uh, this, this, this was a delight. Thank you so much. Um, so first, real quick, go around, the table, go around the table, tell the good people where they can find you, uh, starting with Sam DeLev. Uh, Sam DeLev here. I've been your Cadrax ever singer and uh, erstwhile protector of small warriors. Uh, when not mildly phobic of children, you can catch me throughout the Twitch internet making various flavors of mischief schedule for which you can find on twitch.tv slash Delevely, D-E-L-E-V-E-L-Y, as well as all of my one-offs and special events on Twitter at Tchaikovsky, C-H-A-I-K-O-V-S-K-Y. Uh, Caitlin Bruder. Hi, I'm Caitlin Bruder. The prayer for a second. Uh, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at KKAMABR for all of the things that I'm up to. You can find me on Wednesdays over at twitch.tv slash lore at 6 p.m. Pacific because I know my time zones. Uh, and yeah, I'll watch the pirate show. Uh, B Zelda. I also love gay pirates. Hello, I've been B, your non binary busy. B, you can find me on Twitter is at the end podcaster, streamer, TTRPG writer, and community manager for D&D &D And our here. returning hero, Omar Najam. Hello, everyone. I'm Omar Najam. You can find me at Omar Najam on Twitter. And speaking of pirate romances, check out uh, the show Bane's Break, which is on Tuesdays. Uh, oh, no. I've said too much. <laughs> um, I'm Rick Bud. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at rbud913, or you can follow the show at PowerPlayRPG. Um... First, I want to give a big thanks to Nico DeRoyn, uh, the culture carrier who helped me make sure that I was creating this setting and these characters uh, for this episode accurately and respectfully. I didn't think to ask about metal forging and stuff. You can't foresee everything. But, um, you know, I, I, I could not have done it um, without Nico's advice. Um, so big thanks to Nico. It turns out they um, cold shaped metal. If they had soft enough metals, they would heat and cold like hammer it together and down but they, there was no evidence of actually melting it down and like okay so Ulas, you could have a a, a, a cold shaped metal knife um in my inventory so uh i would like to um 
at this point, uh, you know, I want to talk about something on Nico's behalf. Um, she, she was talking to me, uh, talking about how uh, indigenous women have the highest rate of any demographic of going missing or being trafficked. Uh, it is just a freaking nightmare. And if you want to do a good thing and be a part of the solution, you can make a donation uh, to Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women's Fund uh, or the Coalition to Stop Violence Against Native Women. Jake is putting those two links into the chat right now. I'm going to tweet them out after the show and put them in the PowerPlay Discord. Uh, you know, I know everybody's hurting these days and there are so many causes that need help, but, you know, this is one that just, you know, absolutely breaks my heart. And, um, you know, and any anything that you can give, this is, you know, they're, they're, you know, there are as worthy causes, but there are no more worthy causes. So, um, yeah, uh, look look for that tweet, and these, those links are already there for you. And um, and that's it. Next week, tune in for the season five finale of Power Play, uh, where we will wrap all this up somehow. Um, I, I I am actually a little interested to see that myself. Um, uh, so on that, the theater goes dark and it is 7,000 BCE and we are somewhere in the land that will someday be known as Parnata. A Sadarman boy, maybe 12 years old, uh, stands with his grandfather, maybe around 70 on the bank of a river. Uh, the boy is skipping stones across the surface. Uh, finally, the grandfather says, uh, it's getting late, time to head back. And the boy shakes his head. I don't want to go back. Dad will make me work. I hate work. And the grandfather says, no, oh, you don't mean that. And the boy says, yeah, all right. And they both laugh. And the boy throws his last stone and... There's a dirt path behind them, and uh, they head toward it, but the grandfather suddenly stops walking and looks into the sky. There is a column of smoke rising from behind a not-too-distant hill. And the boy looks at the smoke and then to his grandfather, and he says, What is it? And the grandfather just heads to the path, walking faster, and replies, We must hurry. They follow the path through a field and up a hillside, and... From the top of the hill, they can see their village burning, the shapes of people running between the houses. And the grandfather gasps and then takes the boy by the hand and says, they're trying to fight the fire. We have to help and save anyone we can. And they race toward the village and finally arrive at its outskirts. The smoke is so thick, it is almost impossible to see anything. And the grandfather calls out, does anyone need help? And a moment later, a person steps out of the smoke but it's not a villager. The grandfather says, bandits. And he turns to the boy and he says, run. It's too late though. Another bandit steps out of the smoke and then another and another. And in a moment, the boy and his grandfather are surrounded. And one of the bandits draws a sword and sets upon them as we cut to black. Thanks for playing with us.